Wow, 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 wow. What a Champions League quarterfinal we have witnessed, ladies and gents. So many goals, huge upsets, huge comebacks, and here we are to discuss it all. Pardon the tardiness. Uh, big up to everyone who is uh, just joining in. We were waiting for the results of the um, Man City game to finish up. And that ended up in penalties and resulting with uh, Real Madrid advancing. But before we discuss all the games, ladies and gents, big up to everyone here already in the chat. Big up to everyone who will be joining us shortly. This is the call-in show today. We're going to be doing a uh, double call-in show month special because of the UCL. And because Chelsea News is just absolutely fucking dead. So uh, big up to everyone on the panel. Big up to uh, Chris. Big up to um, Oliver. Big up to Hassan. And um, also want to give my condolences and big up to Angry Rant Man, who we just recently heard news that uh, he has passed away. Um, very sad to hear. Uh, I'm sure he was very beloved by many of uh, us on YouTube that like to watch uh, the content and hopefully uh, his family, you know, uh, get through this because it's definitely a tough, tough thing to go through. So condolences to Angry Rantman, his family, his friends and, and close loved ones. Um, but hopefully, um, you know, think things get better and we have, you know, football to kind of bring us all together and, you know, just, just remember, life is life is precious, people. You never know. Uh, very young to, to go. So too young, I would say. So um, my condolences. And yeah, uh, but ladies and gents, before uh, we go on and, and, and do the show today, uh, be sure to smash up the like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Also, check out the links in the description for more content. Uh, leave a comment down below. Check out the memberships because we have four different tiers starting at 99p. And ladies and gents, as you know, as in every call-in show, if you've been here before, around 20-minute mark, 15-minute mark, we'll release the link. And uh, yeah, we'll get you guys to come on and have your say. So let's go ahead and uh, start off with the, um, the first games from yesterday. So uh, let me actually pull up these results just so I have them fresh in my mind. Um, so first result uh, was uh, yesterday's game which uh, was Barcelona PSG as well as Atletico Madrid and Dortmund. And I got to say, Dortmund making a huge, huge comeback um, in their game. An absolutely, absolute dominant performance. I did not think Dortmund was capable of that kind of a performance, uh, but we saw what happened. And this is the first time Dortmund has advanced this far into the Champions League in like, what, a decade, I believe, was the stat. So good on them, good on... Uh, uh, Edin Terzic for what he uh, he's been doing with this Dortmund side we move over to Barcelona as well uh, Barcelona who had the lead in aggregate this game and you know started the game off winning and PSG and I gotta give it to Jose Enrique man um, I think Jose Enrique is proving Luis that Enrique. he is Jose Enrique Luis Enrique god damn it I always do this um, Luis That's Enrique, a good one, man. I'm joking. Yeah, Luis Enrique uh, showing that he is a a top manager for sure, um, and and we see it with the way he managed the game, the way he managed to keep the players calm and not lose their heads. And they they Barcelona, uh, Barcelona gets eliminated. You you saw um, who's the Barcelona defender? Ah, uh, fuck. Uh, Araujo, yeah, yeah, which I, I honestly we'll talk about that decision. Um, technically, it is the rules, right? But I, it was very harsh. It was very harsh um, to get sent off for that. But we'll, we'll discuss. Um, and PSG, just one goal after the other. Barcola just penetrating the box constantly. Um, Mbappe showing up. Dembele doing his part as well. And PSG also dominate uh, a 10-man Barcelona. Uh 4-1, the final result. So absolute killer game from PSG as well. And and good on Luis Enrique uh, for getting PSG this far. It's been the first time I think PSG's gone this far since Thomas Tuchel. And speaking on Thomas Tuchel, the first game that ended today uh, was the Bayern game. And I told Arsenal fans, don't get ahead of yourself. 
you guys are the first time uh, showing up to Europe in ages. You don't have the experience. The nerves are going to set in. You are going to uh, the Allianz Arena, fire and brimstone. Not many European, uh, not many teams, away teams in Europe can go to the Allianz Arena and say they come out the victor. Obviously, we have because we're Chelsea and we won our Champions League that time. But um, it is not an easy ground to play in and it showed. And you know what? Thomas Tuchel getting the result. Thomas Tuchel showing why in comp competitions he is not a force to be reckoned with. And he gets the results 1-0 against Arsenal. Arsenal are eliminated. Two games that Arsenal have lost on the trot now. Um, we will see what happens to their league form as a result. That will be interesting to discuss. Uh, but Arsenal are eliminated. And Arsenal are not the only European uh, or only English team eliminated from the competition. Now, after watching the 1-1 draw, after watching the extra time, after watching the penalties, and watching Mudrik... Uh, Mudrip, sorry, Modric fail a penalty and City, Kovacic, City with Bernardo Silva fail both their penalties. City fail, City capitulate. The City has crumbled in the UCL and we now see Real Madrid advance into the semifinals. So if I'm not mistaken, uh, the semifinal is going to be Bayern Real Madrid versus Correct. or Bayern versus Real Madrid and PSG versus Dortmund. Good, good football to watch uh, in the coming days. But I mean, let's start off with the game we just watched. We just watched uh, City capitulate against uh, Real Madrid. At home, at the Etihad. I was told that um, they weren't going to lose at the Etihad. But here we are. So let's have this discussion. Chris, I'll let you I'll let you take the wheel first. I mean, I don't really watch the whole City game, as you know. Uh, I was watching the Arsenal I mean, we were all watching the same games at the same time. I, I, I wasn't at first. I was watching the big TV instead. And uh, yeah, I want to say, man, Arsenal, you could have technically a worse season than Chelsea with trophies. You can have it. You can hold that, man. No Champions League, no Premier League. You can hold that, like all that shit, man. We're here, like we're a big club. No, you're you're a shit club. But yeah, like um, everyone's saying, like Tuchel ain't gonna do it. You know, Tuchel's done it. He's done it. Like he's shown it in front of the world. He's still there as a good coach. You know, you can lead a team to win. Like uh, you can you can suffer while watching it. But yeah, I want to like you know say. Like congrats to like Tuchel because he's had an awful season with Bayern. He's honestly by yes. Unix. Like they've been conceding like every game and they kept a clean sheet against the mighty Arsenal. So, uh, yeah, like it, I I wouldn't write off by Unix as like this season because like in the Champions League because Tuchel is very good in the Champions League. So it's great to see um obviously by Unix go through and Arsenal go out and Arsenal now they have to play um. Wolves in three days, and they're probably like gonna force Saka to play that game as well. Because Saka, was, he actually, I know people are joking, obviously in Olympic and stuff, but he probably is suffering. Um, he's he's honestly probably hurt, and he's you know like it might be like the Kante situation where we force Kante to play, and it fucks you in the long run. So they should they should honestly, um, I don't know, rest him, but they won't. They're gonna try fight for that Premier League, but they're not gonna win it now because they just fell behind Man City on that, and Man City mm -hmm. just gone out too. So what Man City got to concentrate on? The Premier League only now. So it's, I think it's over for Arsenal as a club now this season. And next season, I think they're fucked. Because like, if Saka's like limping like this and it's like genuine and real, he, he's not he's not gonna last next season. I think he's just finished as a player like for like next season or whatever. Uh, so yeah, um, it really sucks yeah. not seeing seeing my team in the Champions League. I I can say like all this shit about Arsenal, but we're shit too. So it's kind of hard to say that. I don't feel like real with that type of shit. So we're shit too, but we could win a trophy this season and Arsenal couldn't. So, uh, so that that'd be great to see, I guess. But yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Also, also with Man City's game, uh, that that was good. that was honestly like I think two of the best teams in the Champions League, and Real Madrid can now go on and maybe win it all. Like they could be by Unique Navy. They could be uh I don't know who's the other side now. It's PSG and uh, Dortmund, Dortmund, right? 
Yep. Yeah, so they, they can really do this. Like, Angelotti could go out of a bang. Like, I think he's actually got one more season, actually. So I'll say go out of a bang. Yeah, he and signed an extension. Oh, is he signed an extension? Okay. Um, yeah, so Angelotti, man, he's 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 still got it as well. Like, he's he's winning the Spanish League. He's, he could win the Champions League. He could do the double or the treble if he's won the FA Cup. So, yeah. It's, 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 it's good, obviously. But a uh, good day for uh, rivals of, like, Chelsea... Uh, you know, Man United, I guess. So, you know, seeing Man City go out. But yeah, good day, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, Hassan, what are your thoughts on uh, the City game? And I mean, now that uh, Chris jumped the gun and, and started talking about the Arsenal game, give us your thoughts on the Arsenal game, too. I didn't really watch the City game, that's why. Oh, wait. Can you hear me now? Because you did call yes. for a second there. Um, yeah, I mean. Uh, what a game that was as well. Um, we we had like two close ties. Um, both the games could have gone either way. Results could have been different. And <laughs> starting with the what was it? I'm surprised that um, Atletico and uh, no, st- uh, talk, talk talk on Arsenal City first. Let's not go over right, the right. place. Let's yeah. <laughs> Arsenal, Arsenal City, right? All right, uh, City won. I think that's fifty fifty. You could have flipped a coin. And see who would have lost that. But yeah, I mean, it was a close match. It was a tactical game. Uh, Haaland was kept quiet yet again. The pockets of space were there for him. So yeah, I mean, I think he should have started with Alvarez rather than Haaland. But yeah, I mean, that, that, that game was a tight game. And yeah, pens is deserved. Like, whoever wins or pens just goes through. It's just what it is, what it is. It's two evenly matched teams. Um, with the Barcelona, uh, Barcelona, um, Arsenal and the Bayern game, again, that, that, that was that was a closer tie there than I initially thought. I thought that game would probably, Bayern would probably smoke them 3-4-0 at home, but fair play to Arsenal. They've had their chances. I don't know, like they cried about uh, not having a corner and stuff like that, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is and Bayern all, have always had that experience where Mm-hmm. When it comes to tight games, you have the players like Kimmich. Whether you rate Kane or not, Harry Kane, they've got players that can punish him. Like, you've seen in the first leg as well, like how many shots they have, like five shots and two goals went in. Like, mm-hmm. They punish you on the break and stuff. And that's that's what a lot of people need to realise. And uh, that, this is what Arsenal fans need to realise. Like, it takes about two, three attempts in Europe before you're genuinely in the finals. And it is what is not many teams can go through a final with the first squad in the first time as well. So, yeah, that game was just experience. And once Bayern were one nil up, you knew they were going to defend because with how that game was going, everyone was trying to win duels. And it was 50 50 challenges flying in and they were being won. So, yeah, Bayern game and the City game, two very, very close games. They could have gone either way, but yeah. I'm not. I'm not surprised with the results either way. I think it was expected for both Bayern and Real Madrid to go through. Or well, to be honest, City were more of the favourites. But yeah, that's all I was gonna say. Okay, um, Oliver, what are your overall thoughts on the the games you watched? City getting eliminated, and now we're seeing uh, Arsenal, Arsenal as well eliminated. No more English clubs in Champions League. That's not good for us, though. I mean, hey, it's almost it's almost like the Champions League's... Over, I mean, so the Premier League's overrated. But anyway, that's a discussion for another day. Um, they, were, they were two pretty, like, relatively fun games. I, I definitely enjoyed the City-Madrid game a, a lot more. You know, in, the, in, in the early stage, you can just see the quality in Madrid. You know, you know Man City have their fantastic press that they always do. And Madrid were playing through it pretty well. And it was just, it was just a pretty nice game in that respect. And, um, yeah, just... Good quality from the goals, and they took it to the wire because you know these are the two of the best teams in the world. You know they can they can defend, they can attack, and we just saw you know a proper chess match between Carlo and Pepe. It was really fun, and the Arsenal game you know a bit more on the boring side because it was it was quite tentative from both teams. You know Tuchel obviously with Coman getting injured on the weekend, he had to play um, uh, Rafael Guerrero at left wing. So is it true? Wait, Coman got injured. Yeah, I mean, it's Didn't Kingsley Coman. come back? It, 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 it's Kingsley Coleman, Marshall. Yeah. Holy shit, dude. This guy is a fucking glass cannon. Yeah, and he's only like 25 years old, bro. He's been 
injury prone for so a fair insane. bit now. That could be but, that. yeah. So that's, that, that, so that's why you had the two left backs. You know, don't believe Arsenal fans. They're doubling up on Saka. No, no. Mm-hmm. But, 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 when, but when they play four centre-backs, because that's what they did today, you know, let's not talk about that. And, um, yeah, so it was a bit more tentative. Arsenal, you know, they're, they're playing their first quarter-final in how long? Um, yeah. Away from home. You know, they, ha- they didn't have the advantage this time of having zero behind fans. They yeah. had the whole stadium packed this time, so it was a bit more difficult. And, yeah, so... Not really that much action going on besides, you know, I did enjoy watching Musiala. Musiala is always a player that gets me on the edge of my seat. Just the way he picks up the ball and drives, you know, that's that's the stuff I like to see in football. We don't don't get enough of those players anymore, to be honest. So it's good to enjoy the ones that we do have. And yeah, at the end of the day, you know, Kimmich with a good header and then Tuchel brought on the defensive reinforcements and then it was just too much. And that mm. corner at the end from Saka pretty much summed up the whole thing. So, yeah. Not much that was a shit think. corner. Who took that corner, by the way? Was it Saka? Saka, yeah, yeah. Saka. Who was that was like that was like worse than Mason Mount's corners. I I can't believe how low it was. <laughs> it had no lift to it. it. Had no lift to it, man. Listen, I I know I have an Arsenal agenda, but let's not let's not disrespect. I mean, no, Saka that corner. That no, I mean that corner. That corner alone You're was disrespecting worse. him by comparing we, him no, to Mason. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. Yes, we can. We we can criticize him again. No, Mason Mount's still good. shit. I'm sorry, Saka. Saka is a good player, but he didn't show up. That's just, that's just saying. He hasn't, he hasn't done that well. No, I don't but like again, but, but, but I feel like that's been the trend as of recently. You know, mm-hmm. will you not say so? It's been a trend that he's not basically been um, um, what's it called? Been showing up, and part of that again is on him, the player. And second, is that this guy's been played into the ground, bro. You know, I know yes. a lot of us, you know, we like to make fun about the mean, but he's limping all the time. <laughs> no, I was saying to you, but bro, that limp is real for a reason. That's all I'm gonna say, bro. Mm. Um, this comment right here, see Nayak, it's a great day, no double treble, and Arsenal showed they are ass again. Ladies and gents, this is a good week in that sense. We don't have to deal with the double treble. The treble hopes for Man City have now diminished into dust. That is not going to happen anymore. Now, we have a possibility, and it was said earlier in the chat, Listen, we have a possibility of going up against a demoralized uh, Man City now. Demoralized and tired at that. So this is uh, a good opportunity for Chelsea to see if they can get a result. To see if they can get a result. I'm not going to say we're going to, but it's an opportunity. Um, Europa is done for us now. Conference League, here we come. Okay, fair if we, enough. If, basically, if we get some place, essentially, that's going to be Conference League now. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, if so get sixth and place, fifth. No, no. Sixth yeah, no. is Europa, and fifth is still Champions League, right? Because we're getting another slot. No, well, fifth will be in Europa now. Okay. No. So fifth and sixth is Europa. Yup. Oh, okay. Good. Go. 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 All right. Well, let's see what happens. Uh, it's true. Seventh gets nothing. Okay. Oh, gets no, because Mama. like how early like every English team's gone out in these Champions League uh, games, like you know group stage for Wait, but Newcastle what, uh, does and Does anyone, anyone in chat, anyone here know what happens if uh, if Liverpool somehow make a comeback? Not to say they That's will, but league, does that have any effect at all? Um, well, if if they if they, if they win, um, so if they win the Europa League and finish, they're going to finish in the top four. Um, actually, I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't um, think it's gonna make a big difference. I think, other four teams are going I think it, unless I, that fifth place team coefficient's high, I don't think they qualify for Europe. The fifth place apparently does become a, a UCL spot, but it depends on what team. The rules are a bit weird. It depends on what team gets fifth. I mean, it, we're not getting fifth anymore because we, exactly. we're pretty much, pretty much, the Premier League and the Bundesliga were neck and neck on coefficient. And now Bayern have just eliminated Arsenal, so yeah. you know they they go up. That basically, by the way, that basically means yeah that I can't lie to you, boys. Uh, on Saturday, that means it might be a, a boom and bust game. Yeah, yeah, the Europa League's our only hope. Well, the FA that's Cup. the only way you can get Europa League. I'm assuming then, yeah. if you're on the FA Cup, so that means it's gonna Saturday be a our cup final. That's our Champions League final, right oh. there, boys. 
Hey man, but listen, I'm surprised you never hear anyone talk about Arteta out though. You know what I mean? In the Arsenal fight, do you not think? Depends who you listen to. There's a few, but it's just a minority. It depends who you listen to. Like if you're if you're on the league on a side, he's Arteta out after every loss. Yeah. Because like, I feel like now it's been back to back. It's like it's consistently bottling it, bro. You know what I mean? Like, what? Why is that? You know, you know what it is, right? He's doing the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, man. He, like, he gets just to the good amount where he gets the praise where it's due. Like, at least he tries. But give it another no, what? To give it, Ahmed, just give it another two years. Wait. And boys. then they lay. Wait, wait, boys. Well, no, let's hold on, because wait, hold on, boys, boys, yeah. boys, boys, hold on. Uh, let's, because uh, I, I, before we go too far into this next topic, Scott, welcome to the show, my friend. Um, Hello. Do you want to explain the whole coefficient yeah. scenario right now? Well, I, I can explain it in as much detail as I can remember. So as of right now, top four gets Champions League, fifth gets Europa League, and sixth gets uh, Conference League. Um, that's as of right now. The only way that changes, the only way that changes is if uh, City win the uh, FA Cup, Aston Villa win the Conference League, Liverpool wins the Europa League, or United finishes fifth and wins the FA Cup. Unless one of those things happen, sixth is Conference League. Because uh, the coefficient thing's done, because before this i think before this get uh, not this game week before these round of fixtures so before basically before the quarterfinals of the of the champions league and the europa league etc etc the top two countries in the coefficient were italy and germany and since then two german teams have gone through the final of the champions league and a german team is almost guaranteed to go through i i think leverkusen go through personally against west ham so they went through to the semis quarters whatever it is of the europa league and then Italy are about to have guaranteed a team go through to the again quarters semis of the Europa League as well because AC and Roma are playing each other. Mm-hmm. And the only teams we are reliant on are Liverpool, who are three 0 down against Atalanta. So again, if they go through Atalanta, it's definitely fucked. West Ham, who are down to buy Leverkusen and Aston Villa, and I don't think they're going to help the coefficient personally in the, in the Conference League. So, as Ahmed said. It's FA Cup or nothing at this point. If we want Europa League, it's FA Cup or nothing. Yeah. I mean, if like, we're being I, honest, if we're being honest, it always was. Oh, no, sure. like, there was <laughs> there was a, there was a chance, but it was like you had to have like a million different hoops and like dominoes line up and everything. And this is what happens when you you get in a position where you need other teams to like, or you rely on other teams. Um, and yeah, and then, but but that's the thing, like. And um, yeah, it's now uh, the F- the F- that FA Cup game against City is the most important thing. And so, go ahead, yeah. go ahead, Scott. Finish what you're saying. Well, say it's the most important thing, and it's it's. I'm in two minds because like the the good thing is they went to 120 minutes, but yeah, you know for a fact after that game, after they've just lost that game, especially on penalties, the way they did, Pep is going to have them. But I there is a part of me that is not would not be surprised if they came out on Saturday and smashed us four 0 Mm-hmm. Lost at home as well. Remember that? As like a statement. No, it's at Wembley. It's at Wembley. It's no, they just, lost. Just, they they just lost this game on penalties at home. So that yeah, could add. Oh, like, yeah. even though they are, there will be like some tired legs, and they'll be probably heavily rotated. It's Pep, and you know they're gonna just like it didn't matter who they were facing. Like it's almost unlucky that it's us. Like mm-hmm. they, it would not be surprised me if they turned around. Equally, it would not. It would kind of not surprise me if they turned up and were lethargic as well. But like, yeah. I mean, because they are—they're gonna be exhausted. Uh, they have a I game wanna... in three days. Real quick, re- real quick. I'm—I'm I'm sorry. Before before you go, uh, just to address TKL uh, KGB, um, big up to you. I know you've been watching the channel for a while now. Um, for anyone who wants to watch the match review for Everton, I am currently working on getting it unblocked because oh. when we were watching the replay for uh, the the little bust up on the penalty. YouTube blocked it because of that. It was it was copyrighted. Like I didn't think that it wasn't really a gif. It was a it was like oh. a five minute five second clip. I it was um, a but because I was playing it over and over again, I think yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, it, they, 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 the algorithm got me. The algorithm got me, ladies and gents. So hey, up. please uh, smash the like button to help me with the algorithm and for the algorithm gods to forgive me. But I'm working on uh, 
editing that part out and re-uploading it so that it shows up. So for those of you who want to watch that review. But yeah, uh, big up to you. Uh, Ahmed, uh, you were going to say something. I'm sorry to interrupt you, my friend. Well, listen, man. Um, I was just going to talk about, like, you know, I know that, you know, um, I think Karma the Gentleman's name that's next to you. I think it's Hassan, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. He was talking about how Arteta is very similar to Oli. But the problem is, he's actually getting them to really good places. He's actually getting them very close. He's Whether it be to top four, he's almost there. And then there will be like a collapse in like in a two to three within two to three games that will just be the end of them. And it's just it's been like the last four seasons, it's happened almost consistently. They want to get into top four, bold. They try to uh, compete for the league. There'll be there's that week where they just capitulate, like so, which has happened this week again. So it's happened like almost three to four times now. At some point, you know, you have to ask the question: Should we continue to stick with this guy? Or do we bring in someone else that's gonna take us now to the finish line? Because everything's pretty much there. We just we need to just get over, you know, mm-hmm. the finish line essentially. So for me, that's that's just the question you have to ask when it comes to Arteta. I wouldn't say wouldn't say everything. I wouldn't say everything's there. <laughs> I, I do again, agree. But, but, but again, but again, but again, but again, Oliver, I would say at best, yeah, if we're being honest here about, about Arsenal, I probably see what one or two more players at most. That you probably want to add to that squad. Really? I guess, yeah, but a left back then, and a striker. E- even team, then, you know? like, yeah. you, you yeah. got to think about it this way, too. It's been a four year project for them, right? I, I believe it's been four years. Yeah, about four years, yeah. They, they've yeah. spent yeah. about 800 million in players and revamping that squad. And they let go of a lot of players on a free. Mind you, they didn't make much profit on their players. The players that they decide to boot, Sold, the Obama yeah, Yangs, no. um, uh, Shaka, Ozil. Uh, we could go through Ozil. There's a whole list of players that they got rid of to re- to make this current squad, and for them to have still not accomplished anything outside of an FA Cup, that is that's not a good look on our Arteta. Oh, I think so- if I were if I were um, the uh, uh, F no not FSG what uh, Cronkies if I was Cronkies, the Cronkies. Uh, uh, I would consider maybe seeing how this season plays out and next season, if no more results, he gets the sack. They have to hire like, someone else. But I, but I don't know who they can like, get, though. But, but, like, this, but the problem is for me, Marshall, the trend already exists. You've got a free season trend now where it's happened for different objectives. For top four, he bowled. For first place, bowled. You can, you can, you can, you can still last season team. was a bowled job. Last season was, yeah, last yeah. Year was a bowled. This season... If it continues as it is on course to, that is also going to be a bottle job, bro. See, like, I get that, but he not. didn't—he didn't bottle point, getting. He, he didn't bottle the second time it, getting top not, four. This season isn't a. The, hmm? I wouldn't say this season. I wouldn't say this season is a bottle job. What this season is is a failure without the without the mm. league. Yeah. Like you, yeah. Last like, season was definitely apart, a bottle. Like, you need to, yeah, last season was bottle job. This isn't a bottle job because they haven't been like it's been tight and it's been a close race. But if you go from challenging from a title and it's like you could not win the first time, that's that's fair enough. Even though you bottled it, that's fair enough because it's your, you know, it's first season back challenging, right? It's now second mm-hmm. season. You should know all the pitfalls you fell into last season. You should understand the same pitfalls. You should understand. By the way, City are worse as well. This Liverpool team is not infallible as we've seen. Like Salah's doing his usual bullshit that he normally does. Like his he his normal not turn up. I think is on the decline. To be honest with you, hundred percent. And you look at that. Like you look at that team. They've got a crackhead up front who shoots whenever he's got a sniff of the goal. They've got some dude in midfield. Why Timo looks like, Werner, man? But no, brother, he does a line of speed before he goes out and plays football, bro. He's just, he he's shooting yeah. every huh? angle apart from the that makes sense. Like he is on something fierce, but they're <laughs> yeah. declining. Like this is. Probably the worst Liverpool t- side we've seen under Klopp in the sense of that's challenging. I mean, um, outside of that season where they got all the injuries, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. City aren't as good as they were before. Like, this is your best chance to win a league outside of last season, and you spent a hundred million pounds on a midfielder to shore up that midfield because that was the area where you felt you needed to improve, especially in terms of depth. And you went and spent 70 million on a guy who was either going to be used for midfield depth or has now transitioned into your like your key attacker. Because he's moved, Jesus is now a winger when they play together. So mm-hmm. you've spent 170 ish million. Nearest makes no difference on two players who are ma- meant to elevate you from that challenging level or nearly there to call cool, winner winning the league. Anything apart from a league title 
because that I would have said anything apart from a trophy, but you've bottled everything, or not bottled, but you're out of everything you could have won. Like, you're out of everything you could have won. Anything but a league title was a failure at this point for them. Yeah, and at that so point, I actually agree with Ahmed, where, like, if you're serious, like, if you want to take that next step, you have to seriously look at Arteta and go, can we win the league with him? If the answer is no, you have to sack him, because that's the next step. Because otherwise, what has been the point of this? Yeah, and by the way, like, oh, it's prime. Sorry, Ahmed, do you want to say something? Or... I want to say one little thing. The, like, even if we don't say the seasons are, are about, currently about whatever you want to call it, right? You've got three seasons where the primary objective has been failed. And even if you'd argue the secondary objective of targeting even an FA Cup and Carabao Cup has been failed. You know what I mean? They've had, they've lost in like fixtures in the FA Cup and Carabao Cup where you're like, how did they lose to them? Like league, championship and league one teams as well. So you, the trend exists there, but go ahead, Prime. Yeah. Um, I said this actually back last summer. Um, I was speaking to like one of my whatever, um, and I was saying what Arteta is doing with what nothing. I, what Arteta is doing with um, Arsenal. If eventually he's not able to win anything major, then it's like very similar to what Poch did at Spurs. And I, I rate Arteta. I think he's a very good coach, but like he might just be. A nearly man he might be the guy before the guy who's winning things and like and that's okay it's okay having a guy mm. who's able to come in and build up your squad and then you get rid of him and then you go get your winner which is what i assume we well i think that's what we've been trying to do it's only unfortunate yeah. that it hasn't worked out with potter and potch but we are trying to get the guy to build up these young players so in two three years time when they're good enough to challenge and win then you go get the winner. And I think that's what Arteta is, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I think Arsenal might run into what Spurs did, where because they were so attached, the fans were so attached to Poch, Levy got lazy or whatever, and people use the new Spurs stadium as an excuse why they couldn't spend money, and they kept Poch in charge. And eventually that squad, either the players got too old, or certain players like Carl Walker and Ericsson left and they didn't replace them. And the squad just like became meh. And then you eventually sacked uh, uh, Poch, Poch after continuously failing on big stages. And then you bring in the winner in Mourinho when your team's already washed and can't do anything. Mm -hmm. Arsenal might run into that problem. I, Arsenal will really see now if the Conkeys have truly changed. If they are serious, maybe Arteta gets one more year. I personally wouldn't give him one, but maybe he gets one more year. But next season, if he stays, he has to win something major. It has to be the Prem or the Champions League. I don't agree with this thing of no one can win the Champions League with Klopp here or with Pep here. I don't believe he has this stranglehold over the league. I don't think it's that hard. You, put, you got so close last year and this year shouldn't be that hard get over the line or go win the champions league one of the two it's not that difficult i've seen two go win the champions league with um havertz mount and Werner as a front three i've seen dimiteo and nobody win the champions league like winning the i've seen ranieri win it with leicester like as winning major trophies yes it's difficult and it has to be the best of the best but like it's also not necessarily as difficult as people make it out to be if you've got the right team or you've got the right mentality. And I don't think Arteta has that. I look at this Arsenal squad, I think it's good enough to win major trophies. I've been saying this. I think a lot of their players are very good and have the potential to be world class. But you will only really see this under an elite manager. You look at this Bayern team, people tell me Bayern are so terrible and so horrible and it's the worst Bayern team you've seen in the last like 11 years or whatever and I kept telling people they've still got Tuchel he is an elite tactician they will find a way and they will beat Arsenal because Arsenal on the big stages they crumble they crumble with Wenger on big stages and they're crumbling now nothing's truly changed Arsenal are just back to where they were with Wenger being nearly men there nothing is going to change. They spent 100 million on Declan Rice to 
not really improve that much. Exactly. Near and then. And no, by the way, no, no, title is not no, no, title no, race no. is not over. Mathematically, they're still in this title race and they can still go on and win the league mathematically. But mentality wise, they they're win. gone. How can you not Chelsea were awful last season, arguably worse than they are this season. And we were one down against a title. Well, at that at that stage, everyone believed Bar Dortmund would win the league, right? We were facing a champions elect Borussia Dortmund team, and we managed to overturn a one 0 deficit. How can you not do that? This elite, scary Arsenal team. It's about mentality. What did you say? The writing but, as well, the, like yeah. What what's crazy is like. With the Rice thing, it's like, I think his best position anywhere in the Arsenal team is as one of the eight, as always the other eight. Like, him being the six was not, should never have been the plan. But you brought him in to be that six, to, to be like, to replace Partey. And the guy that's starting in the six in a Champions League quarter final in a must win game for you is Jorginho, who was Partey's backup last season. Jorginho was brilliant today, though. No, but like, even, I mean, even if he was, even if he was, that's your backup to the guy that you replaced. Like, you bought Rice to replace Partey, and Partey's backup from last season is the guy starting in the six. Yeah. If not a squad planning, it's a failure. No, no, but you know why that's failed. You know, but it's not It's not because of Rice. The reason why Jorginho has to play in the six and Rice has to play in the eight is because Havertz was supposed to be their left eight signing, and he hasn't worked out. And you once once again, that's a failure. The hundred million on Rice, has, even though I think the money is too much, but Rice has been a brilliant signing for them. But you took a yeah. massive gamble on Havertz when you did not need to. He's one of your highest wage earners, and you wasted sixty mil. You wasted sixty mil. When you the issue, the issue. There are elite strikers out there you could have got, or forward players you could have got to make a difference. In that. Leroy Sane, who is having a terrible season, the sh was. Phenomenal tonight. He was brilliant. I just want to do was it dominate in midfield of sorry Goretzka and Lamer. They're awful footballers. They're awful players. Like Lamer, this is. Goretzka, I agree. Yeah, like I, 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 this yeah. on Arteta, and the thing is, I like Arteta as a coach. I think, like, again, he's a nearly man. Like Arsenal are not at a stage where they are good enough to win things. They are not going to win anything major with Arteta. And the biggest thing is, he did what? When Poch at Spurs, he was not going for these uh, the, the FA and Carabao Cup because he wanted to focus on the league and the Champions League. Arteta's doing the same thing. This season would not be that bad if you had won the Carabao Cup and you were in an FA Cup semi-final. Season wouldn't be that bad. But it's the fact of this is all you have to play for and you're still failing at it. For me, fundamentally, I, for me, I just want to uh, just to go up here. The, the, I think the midfield issue is that you know, I feel like they're looking for like another guy that can like thread the needle essentially. That's why Jorginho is playing, by the way, because they the, the only reason Jorginho is playing is because they need another guy other than Odegaard that is able to make that pass. Maybe you know that is gonna you know kick it to 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 that to the attacker to help them get through. Because you know, obviously, with Odegaard, this season has been a bit more inconsistent than it was the season before. And that's meant that Rice has had to almost like you know um, play this eight, uh, this box to box eight role essentially, even though he's been playing that really well. So, I, Ahmed, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't disagree with you. Mm. But then, why did you buy Havertz and why did you buy Rice? Exactly, exactly. They, no, but exactly. they should never bought Kai Havertz for sure. The problem is, like, no, no, forget, forget just Havertz. Like, and and Rice has been really good for them. But if that's yeah, the kind of midfielder you were after, like, mm -hmm. why did you buy? Why did you spend hundred million on Rice? And Scott, they're know. also linked to Onana at Everton. Who, who's not that player? Another one, though. That's, but that's not the box. But this is the issue. Like you keep on going off the box to box, box to box, and then box to box. Remember, Jorginho is finished at the end of the season. By the way, his um his contract I think ends for them. Yeah, it does. At the end of this yeah. season. Like so, I was gonna say, that they they still like none of the not, neither Rice nor Havert have have replaced Shaka, which is the key loss they had in midfield. They haven't replaced him. Because that what they've done is they've nice pieces and they've brought in certain other things about the way they play, but they haven't the stuff that they got out of Xhaka, the positives, they haven't added outside of maybe the leadership thing from Rice. 
And like, like defensively, like, I would say obviously he's better than Shaka, but like, uh, like passing and stuff like that, he's just not. But again, but again Shaka really wasn't. I'm not necessarily talking about defensively because outside of the fact that Shaka would cover the left back when the left back pushed forward, I'm not yeah, talking about defensively. It was just off on the ball. It was his ability to switch play. It was his ability but on again, the ball. It was ability Scott, to be able to shoot. Again, Scott, it's not. They it's haven't recovered. They haven't recovered. recovered. But it's not because of Rice. It's be. It's not be. They haven't replaced Shaka, but it's not because of Rice. It's because of Havertz. Everyone forgets Havertz was supposed to be their left eight. Everyone forgets. Mm. People were telling us Chelsea fans that we misprofiled him. Havertz is a midfielder. He's the left eight replacement. That's why Rice is out of position playing as an eight right now because exactly. Havertz failed, and that's on Arteta. You spent big money, and Arsenal, by the way, they're not known for spending big money. There's no guarantee this summer. Arsenal will spend 150 to 200 no. There's no guarantee they will spend 100 million or close enough to another player. No one can tell me they will because we were all shocked. They need to they sell, by the way. They need to sell, by the way. They actually need to sell. But and they're not known I'm for not, selling I'm players for money. They're not like Chelsea who can get over, who can get close to 150 mil for Havertz and Mountain. They're not Chelsea. When you Can I ask a question? When you say 100 mil, you talk on one player or on multiple players? On one player. Like I, I don't mean I say, like well, I mean big money for one player. They, I mean. they shouldn't need to. Like I'm sorry, if you still need to spend big money, it's the same. It, like it's not too dissimilar of a situation. They're much better off than us. But it's not too, like the reason we still need to spend big money on certain positions is because how horrible we've like done in recruiting in those positions, right? Like we still need a big name striker because we haven't spent big money in that area. Because mm -hmm. the guys we have recruited are either guys that like outside, like Jackson's a bit debatable, but like we bought in Aubameyang on a free. That was a great idea. We had Havertz mm -hmm. playing up front, who was garbage. Like we've got David Washington as the backup striker. Like we haven't spent money there. You shouldn't need to, like this Arsenal team should not need to spend like anywhere, like anything more than 60 million on one player. Because you're, I'm sorry, like if you're like, your team should already be close to com completion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest here, yeah, um, Vic. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, let's look at that 100 million price tag here. Yeah, You're players. not getting 100 Ketia, million. I swear. I, uh, I swear. Uh, and Ketia right now for me, and Ketia for me right now, in his for his current value and his worth and the way he's played is 50 million. Uh, yeah. Nelson mm. is probably, can probably get a similar value for. And Smith Rowe has literally. Probably, I would say at most 30 million. So right there, you can probably only get, what, 60 million, in my opinion, from the three of them, in my opinion. If you're being, you know, at a most... Sure, you well, get you're out. getting 100 mil for those four players. You're not Chelsea. You don't sell players. No, it's three. It's three Ch players, Chelsea. bro. That's three, not four. Listen, uh, Scott, if it was Arsenal last summer who had to sell Havertz and Mount, how much do you think they would have got combined? 70 million, probably. Yeah, somewhere 70 to 80 mil, Max. And even I yeah. think that's I even I think that's too much. That's like fair. I'm I, shocked that, I'm that Chelsea got roughly six mil for both Havertz and Mount. Like, yes, fine, we sold it to United and Arsenal who are bozos, but that shows how elite Chelsea are selling players. When was the last time Arsenal made a big sell? Connor um, Gallagher last summer, we could have sold him for what was it? Probably You did not sell to Barcelona. They've so not done a proper sale since probably Wenger time because usually what they do is they keep their players up to the point where they're only worth like a few million and, and then they'll just sell them for bugs or chips. Nazi went for free, right? Nazi went for free. Um, yeah, a lot of, of a free. lot of their big stars after the, after the whole Thierry Henry Fabregas and all of that stuff, a lot of their big stars. He their biggest was, sale was, from the win, like from this season, and like I said, was small. Their biggest sale was twenty-five million. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that was Balogun, was wasn't it? Yep. Yeah, and that's the other thing too. Scott was mentioning earlier. I would argue that although on paper it doesn't look like they should be having to spend more money, they should have plenty to to. You know, they, they should have bought enough to be competing and to improve on what they have. But, and this is the one thing I'm going to say on our end, I think our recruiting has been better. Because you look at where they spent their money. 
their money was really, really badly spent. When you think of like the one that sticks out like a sore thumb, Nicolas Pepe. They bought Nicolas Pepe in this in this run of Arteta's project. No, no, no. He I'm was an Emery signing. He was an, he was Emery. So, just, just Marshall makes a fair point though with Pepe. Why didn't you sell him? He left on a free. Yeah, Wait, is he still on their books? Nice. Nice. No, he went for free. He went for free. Abamyang, Abamyang, Abamyang left on a. Actually, no. You paid Abamyang to go to Arsenal. Or to go to Bar- Barca, Bar- he spent yeah, six months there. Barca yeah, sold him to Chelsea. Deal. Chelsea, he spent a year at Chelsea, and then we sold him for money. So you didn't mm. make like Arsenal have wasted money not just on buying stupid players, but failing to sell them for any they sort bought of a lot of value. bad players, and and they Chelsea misprofiled a lot of their players. People can uh, say what you want about Chelsea buying players and ha- them being duds. I guarantee you, we make our money back. I guarantee you. Um, on just on on the transfer thing, crazy. by the way, uh, does anyone want to have a guess? I love roughly this game. how much they've made. Like since Arteta's been there, what's the most amount of money they've made across a window from sales? I think oh, sixty. Oh god! It's yeah, I'll give you that. Near it makes no difference. Numbers. Sixty to seventy, and that was from yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six sales. That was the window just gone. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I think that was wait, the one that just came back. The most they've made from player sales is 60 mil. Since Arteta's been there from player sales, yeah. is around 60 mil. 60 In one window. That's not how much they netted, so, Prime. So that's how much that's, they made from players. So they've been making net average, losses. And, and can I just point out, by the way, can I just point out? Uh, 50 million, again, near as makes no difference, 50 million of that was from two players. Yeah, I mean, Scott, I don't know if you see this on your end. I don't know what you're looking at, but I'm pretty sure since Arteta took over the project, they've never been net positive in the transfer window. They've only been that, like, losing and losing. I'm literally just, at the moment, just looking through Wikipedia because it's the easiest thing. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I can, just, I can just go over, by the way. I can just go yeah. over their, their, like, sales. Obviously, I can't look at the undisclosed stuff, but, like, the season that he joined, or their first season, 23 million they made. The, the next season afterwards... 25 million and then a, a couple of undisclosed fees but it's for like some rando people that literally like mm-hmm. we players we're talking about the season after 17 million and then 70 again like roughly yeah it's it's and um, no, the more i think about it the more players the more the more i think about it the more players i'm thinking that they let go of they let go of Wenduzi, yeah. they let go of bellerin they let go of lacazette they let go of um you know obama yang which we just discussed pablo mari um they had uh what's the the guy that went to real madrid i think he was only on arsenal for a loan uh sabios william uh was like and, always, like, and, and uh, this is the thing is like look at the players as well they're going to try and sell right because this is the thing of the players they sold in lot in the summer or just across the season really because I didn't really sell one player actually didn't sell anyone in January oh, shit. Oh, Tierney too um, there's another one oh, he's yeah. still on their books oh okay uh, so he's on loan he's on loan he's okay. on loan but um but, like of the players they sold right Mari 6 mil Jack they got 21 mil for but my point of what I'm gonna make is he was playing well that's coming off a good season Trusty, they got five mil from Sheffield United. How would they got five mil? I don't know. Hmm. Uh, Matt Turner, they got ten mil. Balogun, who again had just come off a good season previously with Ren, uh, twenty-five mil, and holding one mil. Like all these players that they're trying to sell, Nelson has not played since I don't know when. You're getting max fifteen mil from him. Mm-hmm. And Ketia has been garbage, and his third choice striker behind a guy that you tried to play in midfield and it didn't work. He's now third choice striker behind him, and he's been garbage. Again, fifteen mil max. Smith rose injured all the time, and I don't remember the last time he played. Didn't they give him another contract I, too I, after that season he broke out? They gave him like a, a new contract. I, I thought I thought they gave Smith rose a new yeah. contract. Most likely. And Katia, they gave a new contract to last season. Go by that and one. Now they, and they also, you know, gave Saka a new contract. Now throw a ra- you can throw Ramsdale into that too. Say you There's a K a week, bro. You might have to get rid of Ramsdale. You might make a bit of money from Ramsdale, but I don't know where he's going to go. Like, it'd have to be a Premier League team. I don't know how many Premier League teams are looking for a keeper at the moment. Like, top teams. Mm. If Chelsea buy him, fuck Chelsea. Oh, yeah, no, serious. <laughs> if Chelsea buy him, that's a downgrade. 
Um, if we buy who? Ramsdale. Oh, oh we're not we're not buying Ramsdale. We're not buying Ramsdale. Holograms though. Um, but yeah, like that oh, him. Who else are they gonna sell? That's I've named four players, and from and those four players, like outside of Ramsdale, they're making fifty mil from the other three, with the way they've been selling. Ramsdale gets some. Let's be kind and say thirty. That's eighty mil from four players. By the way, there's I, no guarantee Arsenal will actually sell these players too. Because last year people were saying that oh, Eddie and Katia and Nelson, they're dead wood. Let's get rid of them. Hold on, Wenger bought Alneni. He's still there. I think so. Yeah, that would be but, like Chelsea still having Aspie. But he's even a free prime this season. He's prime, even prime. Like, do you know what's no, but do you know what's like the, the worst thing about all of this is every single player I've named there outside of maybe Ramsdale are depth pieces in this Arsenal team, which they will have to replace if they want to win the league or the Champions League. Vic, can I ask you a question, Vic? Here, who is going to currently so is you're relying to buy Gabriel Jesus? I'll be honest, I don't I don't think there's anyone right now that wants to buy Gabriel Jesus right now. No, but cool. No, but cool. I think. Okay. I could see how much do they make from Jesus? Hang on. How much do they make from Jesus? Let's be kind and say forty mil. Cool. What? Yeah, let's cool. Say let's mil. say. Let's be kind and say forty mil. I didn't even cool. That, then right? that's another depth. That's another mm -hmm. depth piece you need to buy. Yep. That's another depth piece you need to buy. That's another 20, 30 mil that you need to spend mm -hmm. on a depth piece, which means you have less money to spend on that big name talent that you need to take you over the line. And that's what I'm saying. I think when you look at how much they spent, I, I look at how much we spent, and I would say, you know, people don't see it now because of where we are on the table, but you look at if you get a proper manager with the system and what he can do with these players, you see the potential in our team. You see that these players have the potential and very high ceilings to hit that world-class level. Not all of them. Most of them, I would say, you can see a potential for a world-class level an elite player. When you look at what Arsenal has spent, and to, to think about it, to think that they spent, I want to say, about 150 mil on two strikers, Gabriel Jesus and Kai Havertz, and for them to still need a striker, that's absolutely bad recruitment. That's absolutely bad profiling from whoever's in charge, whether it be Arteta or whatever recruiter they have over there. It's horrible. It's horrible. So I, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I could, I, if, if Arteta were to get sacked at the end of the season, if we were to fail anything, fail to get anything, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I think it's merited at that point because we spent this much on you and you've still not given us anything outside of an FA Cup trophy that you got with a team that was built for the previous manager and not even your own team. Um, but I also, I, th I think I, I can see the Cronkies saying, okay, listen, we're going to, we fucked up in the striker department. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you, you had to use a, a center back and adapt him into right back uh, in Ben White. And I guess where else would they need to solidify? Another CM? Marshall. Can I say something? Hey, if you don't mind, Marshall. Well, I Timber. Say this, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Um, I want to say something, yeah, and I'm going to say it like this, yeah. Fundamentally, right now, yeah, they are kind of at a standstill Arsenal. And that, that's just the best way I can put it. You mm. are, you're literally a, a, a nearly man right now. Yes, maybe you can make the argument, keep Arteta, but if you keep Arteta and he turns out to be a clock, is that successful for you? That's the question you have to ask yourself, right? Let's say next season, hypothetically, he does what Klopp did, like oh, in his well, season, where, I, he I, wins I, the, where, where he wins the Premier League, yeah, and mm. then uh, let's say the next two to three years, he doesn't necessarily win the Premier League, He's still competitive. You get an FA Cup and a Carabao Cup, and then he he leaves, and then he leaves you one EPL, or one F, two FA Cups and like one Carabao Cup. Is that true for me? But for me? Uh, I mean, before Scott goes, because I I, I want to put this out there, and I, I think some of you may agree with me. I'm looking at Klopp's nine year tenure now, and for there to be, let's. Just, I, I'm just gonna be real. I think it's a false Premier League, right? For only to have one false Premier League, a Champions League, two Carabao FA Cups Cup. or two Car two Carabao, Carabao Cups, Carabao. One FA Cup. and one FA Cup to only win five trophies uh, in in your domestic league. 
I'm not counting the the champion the Euro, the World Club World Cup and stuff. That's kind of a given. But to only win those five trophies in nine years, I don't think that's that's good enough. To be honest, it's good for some well, people, but I just don't. Marshall, I just don't think. Marshall, wait, that's, 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 I don't that's think that breaks you into top, top five Premier League well, managers. Well, just for context, uh, a or Premier greatest League managers of all time. COVID, uh, 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 sorry, a Champions League final against Tottenham Hotspurs. So that's a given you'll win. Um, a Premier League one during uh, COVID. A Carabao Cup one uh, again on penalties against a team where they missed sitter upon sitter upon sitter. Um, I mean, FA I'm not going to try to discredit every single trophy they won. They won one, the one, the only one I'm going to discredit is the, 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 the listen, Marshall, I, 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 there's a lot of bias coming out of you right now, Prime. Marshall, I'm just saying. I'm cooking, I'm cooking, I'm cooking. I'm cooking. Oh, no, no, I'm burning the dish. I, I, dis- I can't lie to you. I discredit like every trophy apart from the Champions League and Jesus Premier League. Christ. Not discredit. I, I, no, not discredit. Discredit's the wrong word. I ignore it because for a top club, those are not trophies you should, be, like, you, you should not be based your success on. Like, I'm sorry. Like, no one gives a fuck when you sit you in the Carabao Cup or like all that because it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. We've all said this season if we won the Carabao Cup this season, it's still a failure. But Chelsea Football Club currently in ninth. Like, n- like I'm I'm sorry. I don't care. Like, if you're a top manager, you don't go out winning domestic cups. Yeah. You go for Champions Leagues and Premier Leagues. His time at Liverpool hasn't been a failure. It's been underwhelming because a failure would have been yeah, not yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been underwhelming. Um, but yeah, but I would if if Arteta has a similar thing, it will be underwhelming. It won't be a failure because he will have won yeah, the title saying. for the first time in however many years. It'll be underwhelming. And I definitely think, underachieving. I think, it I think it depends on the. I think it depends not necessarily underachieving. I think it man because the thing about the Liverpool thing as well is the reason it's also underwhelming is because you had one of the you had arguably the best centre back in the world during most of that time. Arguably the best goalkeeper in the world. Actually, no, fuck arguably the best goalkeeper in the world. Yeah. Pretty much that entire time that he was at your club. You had Liverpool fans talking about one of the best players the Premier League has ever seen up front. You had supposedly the best tri- attacking trio that the world's ever seen up front. Uh, you yeah. had like the best DM that the Premier League's ever seen that we kept getting told, the best right back the Premier League's ever seen. You had all these players that were the best in their position, the best team ever. That Klopp underwhelmed with. Um, he, by the way, if we're talking Premier League managers, he barely cracks my top five, and I think that's just because I can't think of a fifth manager. I agree. Uh, but yeah, but going back to the Arsenal thing, I genuinely, I was just going to say on the transfer thing, I genuinely think if you were to keep their team the same in terms of the depth pieces, they need three players. But if you get rid of depth pieces, you need to replace them. The thing yeah. is, he doesn't even use his depth like that, you know. I was deep in it. And then he should. Thing. No, but I, I I think he doesn't because it's crap. But then he needs to because, oh. like, for example, like, if I'm Arsenal, I go and get a centre mid, I go and get a striker, and I go and get a left winger. Because then you move Martinelli as the depth piece winger. You've got... You need to then go and get a depth piece striker if you move Jesus on. And it's not because Havertz ain't it. You might need to go and get a depth piece six or mid, another midfielder anyway. So you might need to go and get, like, five, six players. All of a sudden, hmm. the money adds up. And they don't make money. So... Um, so I guess move, moving on from, from Arsenal, cause now, now we're seeing there's a, there's a lot that needs to be worked on. They're not that team. No, I never thought they were that team. Arsenal. We're not finished. I'm not finished. <laughs> go, go cook what you want to cook about Arsenal, but then we're moving on because I want to talk about the other three games we haven't mentioned yet. And ladies and gents, by the way, this is a call-in show. There is a pinned comment uh, at the top of the chat that has the link, as well as if you refresh your page, if you check the description, the uh, the link to the call-in show is there. So feel free to call in if you'd like, but go ahead, Prime. Cook. I don't know. I just think, I just think it's just brilliant. I was seeing, you know. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Did not mean to do that. You were saying. I was saying pray for Bayern tweets. I guess you prayed too hard. I was seeing Bayern's aura. They have no aura. I was seeing worst Bayern team in 11 years. I was seeing generational Arsenal team, one of the best Arsenal teams you've ever seen. 
Arteta, generational manager. Saka. Over Hazard. He will overtake Drogba's legacy. Better than Figo. Better than Gareth Bale in the Prem. Huh? Martinelli is the best uh, talent of the last century. Huh? 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 Bergkamp Havertz. <laughs> The Bermuda Triangle of Declan Rice, William Saliba, and Gabriel. Huh? Ben White's the best fullback in the Prem. Bang average! Nah, this is insane. Arsenal's system, Arsenal's formation is comparable to Pep's Barcelona team. That is not a lie. Igal has made a video on it and I have it on my phone. <laughs> Bang average! Oh my word. Oh. Our front three is comparable with MSN and BBC. No, did he? BBC. Pause, man. Pause. Where are you now? Where are you now? Where are you now? Declan Rice is better than Rodri. Rod Rice can do everything Rodri can do. Huh? Rodri cannot do everything Rice can do. Do you have these all on a notepad or something? Saliba is the. Saliba is the primary agenda. Is all the main reason. Huh? Center backs. Brazilian fans are only hating on Gabriel when he plays for them. He's an elite center back. They call him Omo Monstro. That is just oh my god. Huh? Ben White should be playing for England. Salke doesn't know what he's doing, which is arguable. He doesn't know what he's doing, but on this topic, he's right. Sal ben White should not be playing for England. But I digress. Zinchenko, it doesn't matter that he can defend, he's a brilliant ball player. No, did he? Hey, yo. <laughs> have a look. Uh, uh, That's Vieira. definitely a half sound effect right there. Uh, uh, Fabio Vieira is our Bernardo Silva. There's no way. Sorry. Who the fuck is that? There's, there's no one. There is not a single soul on this planet Earth that said that. I Please. If a girl said that or something, then I... Scott, 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 Scott Arsenal fans. Listen, no, no, bro, Prime's no, got no, lots no, of no, memory no, when it comes to Arsenal. There can't, be, there can't be a single soul on this earth that says that. Scott, I'll, send, Scott, I'll, I'll, send, you, I'll send you the receipts when I'm done. I'll send you the receipts when I'm oh, done. Oh, my days. Oh, my days. Uh, I can believe everything else, because I've heard a lot of it. I can believe everything. That's the one. That's that's the one I can't believe. He doesn't even play. Bruh. Do you know yeah, what it is? No, no, no. I know. In the beginning of the season, in the beginning of the season, he was playing. And I legit forgot he existed. I legit forgot he existed. He was playing in the beginning of the season. You don't believe it? Okay. It's fine. It's fine. I forgot he existed. True. You don't believe you don't believe they said that about Fabio Vieira? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh. I think Vieira was playing the way, guys. He was actually doing playing quite well, and then he just stopped playing. Like, no, yeah, he was playing Scott, when um, when Havertz was bad for the first time, and then <clears> they were like, you know what, we'll play him. Arsenal fans have said that uh, Saka is better than prime Gareth Bell, but you don't believe they said Fabio Vieira, Vieira is their Bernardo Silva. That's what he. That's where. No, he no, I can believe they said that about Saka, a hundred percent, because that's like, their star boy. We're talking about a rando skinny Portuguese. Like, I forgot he existed. I can believe they said that about Saka, a hundred percent. Scott, Scott, Scott. Just because you forget doesn't mean I did. Mm. <laughs> Look at group chat then, by the way. You may want to play it. Anyway, Prime, it's fine. Prime, oh. Prime <laughs> shots with game. his mind. I, Prime screenshots, tweets. Cooking. He's I'm got receipts. I respect Marshall and I don't want to derail the stream. So I'll, I'll stop. Listen, and man, let's the... derail the stream, man. Let's derail the stream. End on the video. End on the video. Send. End on the video. Is it the Egal video? Have you seen? Like, have you played it? <laughs> I'm gonna play it right now because I just saw it. <laughs> that is in the group chat. End it on this. But, yeah, we're gonna end it on this one because uh, listen, Egal. You can hold this. Arsenal fans, you can hold this. And honestly, I'm going to also call out the Arsenal Glazers. 
everyone who was a non-Arsenal fan completely shitting on Tuko, saying that this was going to be easy, walk in the park for Arsenal, yeah. that Arsenal, best team in Europe right now on form. They're going to do it. They're going to be the favorites for the, for the Champions League, all this bullshit. Shut the fuck up, bro. You can hold I that. Mean, I, I can't lie to you, man. I, I, I can't lie to you. You made it hard on yourself with that lineup. Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, I Marshall, I have, you... I have to speak, oh, I have sure. to speak on him. Wait, 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 I have to speak on, on him, Marshall. Me... Marshall, let me speak on Osama, please. Let me speak on Osama. Wait, I... okay, yeah, go ahead. Then I'll end it on this. <laughs> All right, listen. Um, listen, <laughs> oh he, did, he did his job today. He got it I right. Be... Listen, he, he did his job today. And again, I've never questioned... Proper Tuchel. tactician. I've never questioned Tuku tactically. I've always said Tuku tactically, mm. great manager. The issue with him is that he's lost the man management ability. That's what's costed him at both Chelsea and uh, what's it called um, now hey, at Bayern. We don't so, know at Bayern yet, do we? Could win Champions League, huh? And, and, and also, he's definitely still on the sniff picking that lineup. <laughs> Bro, uh, no, 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 no. Chris, he, Chris, got Chris, Chris, he, got, Chris, he got the result. Chris, he got the result. Chris, okay. you know, Chris, wait, wait, Chris, we already know the stuff. Like, there's been articles that have been released. Yes, yeah, I, I know he's been on some shit, so, Annie. So, so listen, again, I don't know whether you wanted me or not. Yes, he's man. He has lost his man management ability. That's, I like, thought man he, management. He did. Well he said, though, he said lost. Yeah, when did he ever he... have it? No, 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 no. I, I, did, I, res- I dispute that. When did he ever have it? Yeah, no, what? I, 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 I like this. I man thought man. he. I always thought he kind of had some. When he was at PSG, I thought like maybe because he had, he was no. able to handle those guys. Bust up more. at the board. Even at, even yeah, at, really oh wait, even about board, like yeah. his, he's like, fallen man, out, he's man, fallen man, out with players, oh, no, okay. the board at every club he's been at. Okay, 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 yeah, I agree yeah. with that. I but agree like, with that. so anyway, at the end of the day, man, he did his job today. He did, listen, man, you know, people wonder why I called him Osama. At one point in time, he had four centre-backs, or f- four or five centre-backs, yeah, in his back line. You know what I mean? We, I saw, you know, we, we, we cuss out Potch here for having certain guys in the wing. He had Kim Min Jae on the wing. At one point in time, bro, he put five at the back. He had, he had King no, but J. That's that's, oh, that's, that's understandable yeah. though. That again, that's understandable. No, You're one he, and was, up. he put in the yes, same to defend the lead. Yes. No, Crazy he was literally one and up. Like, bro, you, if you're, you're not your seeing that as like sometimes. a normal thing to do, then yes, I, I don't know what to say. That's oh, why you're the manager, I guess. Listen, listen, he's he, he's escaped one thing. Gentleman. Listen, you know what I mean? Yeah, this is the one thing I wanted to escape anyway, so I'm good. I'm good. He can do whatever he wants no, after this. Ahmed, after Ahmed, after Ahmed, the Ahmed. season, Arsenal, after the season, Arsenal. let the man go to Tibet, find Ahmed. a Zen, learn from Shrey. Ahmed, 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 the reason why I disagree with Again. everything you've said, you, you fraud. You're talking oh. about what Tupac did to You're talking about what Tupac Listen, you could have played you up front tonight and he still would have beaten Arsenal. I don't care he had to be a talent. I don't care that he's so <laughs> Eric, Eric Dyer kept a clean sheet. Yo, actually, no, deep that. Exactly. He got a deep that. He, he, he yelled out Eric Dyer to keep a clean sheet. When you're facing Gabriel Jesus, when you're facing Kai Havertz, I mean, where are they in the league? Where are they in the league? Marshall, put me on big. Oh, whoa, Jesus. Whoa, 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 whoa. Heritage. <laughs> heritage. Heritage. People get I'm, I'm, I'm heritage I'm. actually means Chelsea, when Chelsea have to go to Bayern's backyard just to win their first Champions League, oh. that is heritage. When Chelsea, ten uh, a man down, have to go to the new camp, 2 0 down, have to to beat that Barcelona team. Did I really get mad at the match? Heritage. Yes, he did. You officially got honest. That's what I was going to say. Masterclass, man. Unbelievable. And when, 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 when Chelsea have to beat a Real Madrid 3 P team just to win their second Champions League, that is heritage. And you couldn't beat one of the worst Bayern teams we've seen. You couldn't beat, you couldn't beat this Bayern side. Mm. Man United is meant to machine with them in the group stage. Man United yes. are awful, and you could not beat this Bayern side. Yes. Man United put three Bar- goals past them in one game, and you only put two. You couldn't beat this Bayern side. This Bayern side. With Eric Dyer at centre back. This Bayern, with Goretzka in the field. This Bayern side. Bayern had no left winger tonight, by the way. I had to play a fullback at left wing. You couldn't beat this Bayern side. This Bayern side. This Bayern side. By the Where way, no one's going to be on this. 
no one's going to speak on this. Musiala didn't have to do much tonight. This Bayern side, have some shit. For, have some same Arsenal fans. Have some real shame. Have some. This Bayern side, Curry Pete Cook. Okay, I'm not big a supporter of Tuchel, cool, but when Ahmed says, oh my god, he brought four centre-backs, you know who also has four centre-backs who we glaze? Pep Guardiola, Mikel Arteta, so can we stop, with, yes. glaze, stop, yes. stop with, with this agenda? I'm sorry. You're like, oh my god, guys, guys, he brought in two extra centre-backs. He plays Guardiola, oh left oh back, tactical oh my god. <laughs> guys, guys, guys. At one point, at one point, Kim and Jay was left wing. Guardiola literally banged in the goal <laughs> last, last week. Last week. Last yeah, week. Guys, wait, 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 wait. Before, before, before we do this nonsense, Gavardio has played left back actually as a left back before he even came to Man City. Yeah, but he that's was, his main position. And, you, and he's no, having a bro, shit no, no, season no, no, this no, season no, at left back. Either, and we know why. Yeah, he's been shocking at left back. He's been shocking at left back. That Shock. guy who has had no, you can say he's had a trouble being a but he's actually played there. He's had previous experience there. Oh, like he's five games? No, you know what? In that case, Alonso Doy has some experience now at right wing back, so he's a right wing back. He can play right wing back, so we should play him at right wing back from time to time. Listen, at some point, at some point, a manager has to play him in that position, and now he has experience in that position. It's okay. But when Tuchel does it, when Tuchel does it with Kim and Jay, oh, okay. But when the next manager has Kim and Jay does it, Ahmed's gonna be like, "Oh, but he's but he has experience at left back." Fuck out of here, Ahmed! Fuck out of here, Ahmed! Yeah, yeah, Curry, you talk to me, Curry. That's who you are. You guys are too cool. It's it's one one v v how many? None of us are. Okay, maybe. Okay, the manager didn't have options off the bench. He he brought on. Kimmich at left back and they won the game. Why are you complaining? He did something unusual, but it worked. Why are you complaining? My man, my man I'm played Kimmich. My I'm man played Kimmich at I'm, listen, listen. All I said was, yeah, he lived up to his name. Osama. It didn't teach anyone. That's all you need to know. Simple as that. Hey, it People can't think and criticize him. I just said he's just lived up to his name. Osama it didn't teach anyone. Take that as you will. Hmm. All right, let's let's uh, because I I, I want to hear what Skolix has to say. Big up Skolix. He's gonna watch me cook tomorrow on American Waffle because all these people that disrespected Tuchel, much worse than Ahmed, by the way, much worse than Ahmed. Because at least Ahmed has some sensibility to admit that this man is a proper tactician. But other people on Waffle, hmm. We'll cook tomorrow. We'll cook tomorrow. But let's uh, let's play this clip because uh, some people yeah. had big chest when they shouldn't have, and that's our boy Egal here. <laughs> oh no, sound! Come on, you why you have to bother it like that? That's no sound. Fucking <sighs> You are a bottle job, man, Marshall. Yeah, Wait, just like no. Arsenal. What he was saying? Hey, Marshall, Marshall, can I say one last thing, please? Oh, Go for Curry. Um, you know who also never played as a left back this season, oh, and as a center back, Kivior. You know who also played as a right back for the first time last season, Ben White. <laughs> It's amazing. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. It's fucking I amazing. Hold on, I it's cannot believe. It's fucking amazing. I cannot believe. No, that's not, no. <laughs> guys, I actually, honestly, guys, I don't think we're gonna we're gonna talk about the rest of the games at this point. We've derailed the stream because we have. And, and you know who also played Paris? You know who also played Paris football today? Ancelotti. Ancelotti played Paris football in the last sixty minutes of his extra time and regular minutes. In, against Man City, he played terrorist football. Every Madrid visa is even saying that, and they're, they're fine with it. They don't give a fuck because they won the fucking game. Even Madrid played terrorist football today. Madrid, she can't touch people. Admit it, then. Can people admit though that he plays terrorist football? Doesn't matter. Why? Everyone plays play, serious play, football, then, I, right? I don't call terrorism. He plays for results, man. He plays for results. Yeah, he's trying to play the win. I'm not saying that he's football doesn't Ooh. win games. I'm just saying he's Osama and Binti Taliban. That's all. What? Can I play this clip so yeah, I can have you go off my screen? Okay, <laughs> cool. We need that rebel. Oh, fuck. Hold on.
No, no, it's fine. Bring me Bayern! Bring me Bayern! Bring me Bayern Munich! Let go! We oh need that God. revenge for eight to uh, for ten two. Bring me, bring me Bayern Munich! Let's fucking go! Bayern Munich and Arsenal! I love it! I love it! I love it! I love it! Bring me Bayern! We need this! Harry Kane, we're gonna dunk on your head top. Kimmich, we're gonna dunk <laughs> on your head top. All huh? you Bayern Munich fans from back in the day, we're gonna dunk on your head top. No fans in the second leg. Let's go! I'm so happy. Yeah. He's so happy. It's, it's <laughs> funny that yeah. Kimmich is the again. one that scored the winner, man. It's I funny, man. Yeah. It's I hope you're happy now. Hey, Ladies and gents, so I, I do have to say, though. I do have to say. I cannot believe I can't move away from this Arsenal segment because we just have a fellow Arsenal fan join in on this call-in show making his debut I did not expect this making his debut he he <laughs> he is hey, coming copyright, here with copyright, chess. Copyright. here listen I'm gonna I'm gonna say he came here with chess because he's the brave soul that has come to a Chelsea panel pretty much <laughs> and, and he's gonna hold it. it this is this is this is why I like him because he 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 doesn't back down. Give it, uh, ladies and gents, let's give it up for for the American idiot, fellow panelists on uh, American Waffle. TJ Warren, what is going on, my friend? Welcome, 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 welcome. <laughs> School <-ets. laughs> I mean, First of all. All right, Thank talk, talk, talk. Go Marshall. ahead. Of course, Thank man. Of course. Thank you for having me. Um, it's great to share the screen, obviously, with Prime, mm -hmm. with Ahmed, with Ahmed. I think Ahmed. I think this is the first time you and I have streamed together too, my friend. So, yes. good to share the screen with you. Um, Skolex, uh, my biggest fan. I'm glad to see you. Um, I hope you're there. I hope you're well. Um, you're I will, the Jess, first I will. person. I, I'm, I'm going to be vain real quick. You're the first person to make me their their icon. Um, on YouTube, I always thought I would never get a troll like that. So I'm I'm glad that that you're the guy to do it. So <laughs> it's so a hard. Um, but yeah, it's an absolute honor. Um, Wait. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. What am I? What am I? What am I gonna say? You know. What am I gonna say? Listen. Th this is the thing. This is hey. the thing, TJ. I can't I cook you too much. Because of all the Arsenal fans that I've seen online, you've been reasonable. Like you're not you're not the the mentally ill <laughs> cancer patients on Twitter. Okay, so I can't really cook you too much. But as the Arsenal representative, you must hold that. I know. I, know. I, I knew. I listen. I, I figured you guys would beat Porto. But after yeah. I saw how much you struggled, I was no longer convinced you were going to beat Bayern. Mm, yeah. Because if, 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 if that second leg, you had woken up and just dominated like you should have, yeah, then I would no. have been like, okay, you guys have a shot. Mm -hmm. But you didn't. The nerves were in there. These guys aren't ready. Arteta's not ready for this, this high level of football. But I mean, actually, we were speaking about it earlier. Uh, TJ, I guess let me know your thoughts. If you guys don't win anything this season, what happens to Mikel Arteta? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing happens to him. So he gets next season? Yeah, he 100% gets next season. There's so no five way. years, nearly 800 million spent. You still need to spend more money. You, no. Marshall, we're going to spend a billion. The club. Marshall, we're gonna a spend a club. billion. Look, look, this is not this is not this shouldn't be surprising to anybody. And I'm glad I think this is the first Chelsea channel I've ever been on, by the way. No, nah, I just beat that. Holy shit. Hey, um, so, you, so, so guess what? Balls. Guess what, Marshall? You're welcome. Um yeah, yeah. You say, will be um, back on. You will be back on again back very, on. very soon because we have yeah. a preview to do, but we will yeah. discuss that. And Marshall will be coming on American Idiots on my channel. Yes, of course. Too. Um yeah. but the um, I completely lost my train of thought. No, no, the Arteta's future. So the Cronkies yeah. were there. The Cronkies were at the stadium tonight. Um, there to back their boy. Um, I can guarantee you, when summer hits and the Euros are going on, Mikel Arteta is going to be stateside 
talking to Stan, talking to Josh about who they are going to buy over the summer to try to get us over the line in in Mikel's vision, right? So anybody who thinks that this manager, who I, I I'm sticking with, who I don't support, if he doesn't win us a trophy this season, um, and he won't, um, they're gonna they're gonna make room for him. They're gonna they're gonna continue to to spend money on him, and unless something absolutely egregious happens, he's here. He's here to stay. Because there's a cult of personality that's built been built around this manager and this fan base that is 100 percent that's that's making the Cronkies money, that's feeding into a narrative that top four is okay, that not winning um, trophies is okay, the underdog story is okay, oh good vibes FC is okay, and um, there there are people in the fan base like me that aren't accepting of that, but I am probably maybe what 20 percent of a fan base that where 80 percent of it is okay when you, the mutants on twitter and the very very positive youtubers that i don't need to mention their names but you know who they are um will will come on here and defend until to their last breath for no reason well we haven't won a major trophy in over 20 years like you know it's 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 peak oh, for I thought me the FA Cup like, was look, a major look, trophy for most Arsenal fans. like <laughs> chelsea is in the mud right yeah. chelsea you guys are in the swamp right but you guys at least like have a reason to despair. You guys, you guys aren't even close. You don't need to worry about it. You guys are basically on the beach until next season, right? I have to sit here and Swampy watch my beach. team and my fan base pretend that we're in a title race for the next month and a half. I when mean, we aren't gonna win. I and we're gonna mean. end up in the same situation. And it's like, and you know, we're in April and we're the fools consistently. Mm. Because as much money as we're spending and as much time as we're spending on this manager, we're not going to get anywhere. And you're going to waste the career. You're going to waste the prime careers of players that under a different manager could potentially grow to be the world-class moniker that this fan base labels them with, but with no trophies. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's my take on it. That's my quick and dirty take on it. Um, Mikel, one plan, one plan only. Um, no ideas, no different way to approach a game when the when the going got tough and we lost, and we deserve to lose. So that's it. So, that's that's all I got for today. So, Skolex, I know you didn't get much of a chance to talk, and I have to go, and I'm really sorry about that. I'll, I'll get you in for sure next time. But um, you had one question you wanted to ask TJ. What are your thoughts on Boohoo Saka's performance? Are, are, are you hanging out with? Are you hanging out with uh, with Jacob? Are you a Jacob fan? <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Just wow wow every time. Wow wow Saka. <laughs> we'll call him wow wow Saka. <laughs> no, can you can you do me a favor real quick? Just because I'm feeling like it, will you play the Staffy clip real quick? Just real quick. Oh oh yeah, this this, this is now relatable for you now. Yeah, it is. Okay, oh, go ahead. Oh my God, bro, I'm a joke. Oh my God, bro! We're a joke, bro. We're a joke. We're a joke. We're a joke. We're a joke. Wallahi, we're a joke, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's mm -hmm. how I feel right now. Um, I don't necessarily should. blame Saka 100% for what happened. Um, I I think that the manager is playing him in tactically in a position where he runs down the line and he immediately gets uh, doubled, sometimes triple teams. He has nowhere to go. His teammates aren't giving him options. Um, I, I blame sixty-five percent of it on Arteta and how he's playing him. Um, and but our but but Bakayo Saka is held up by our fan base to be this world-class player, Ugh, right? Yes. That is supposed to be able to create something out of nothing, right? Mm. He's not that player, at least not yet. And under this manager, you've seen him at the highest of highs, at the lowest of lows, and he is our top GA producer, and he's still at the lowest of lows, in my opinion, right now. He can't produce in big games, and I think a lot of that is because of how Arteta plays him. And, yeah, I was um, just about to mention that, actually. I think yeah. Arteta, very much like how we ran Mason Mount to the ground, Arteta is running. Well, between Arteta, between Arteta and Southgate, he's not. He's going to be retired by the too. time he's 29. You know this. You, you got to deep. You got to deep this real quick, guys. He's going to play every single game until we're out of the race. He's going to play every single Dang. match, 
and then he has to go into the Euros. And And, then uh, immediately after the Euros end, he maybe gets two weeks off, uh, and then he has to come to America. I I will say that the average, uh, like, professional lifespan of a football is around 600 to 800 games, whether you play week in, week out, or whatever. So, like, how many is soccer on? Like, 300? Yeah, I was 400. Yeah, it's probably, yeah, yeah, like, it's halfway, like, man. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not even joking to you when I say he's probably like, like, he's probably uh, like halfway through, halfway through his lifespan. I just wanted to say, bro, I feel, this is a a take for me. I think next season, Saka, Saka, the injuries are going to come to Saka next season, I'm afraid. Like, I I, I don't see any way other, or like, because eventually it took him out basically four years of non-stop things and then it hit him. In the fifth season, he's at Chelsea. I feel like next season, that's when it's gonna hit for Saka. You just gotta hope that they at least on some level buy a replacement, um, or so not, or sorry, someone to at least you know okay. uh, tap season for Saka. But I don't see that happening, Matt. It's just for me, man. I'll say this again: it's just crazy that you know someone in the last three season seasons who's who's, who's, a, who's about to not reach any of the set objectives. He's still in your club. That's all I'm going to say. Man. I'm going to say also, if he's going to play that Wolves game and Chelsea game, they need to be careful of an injury because if those limps are like genuine and real, like it's very concerning. Like he's limping off the last three games, right? Like he's not looking right. So like he's going to play in three days and then he's going to play like what another three days against Chelsea where it's not going to be easy, probably for both games for him actually. So yeah, I- I'm a little bit concerned. He might even pick up an injury this season just before it ends as well. It could happen. Yeah. Talk Jez. to me about Kai Havertz, man. Talk to me about Kai Havertz. Oh, <laughs> my favorite guy. You know, um, I know Marshall loves him. Marshall loves him more than you, TJ. Yeah, yeah fun fact. Fun yeah. fact, uh, TJ. I was very much a Havertz stand before. Uh, he me and Marshall, by the way, I don't know if TJ knows this. Me and Marshall debated Havertz, yeah, yeah, at the beginning of the season because he had such a love for him. So, you know what my heel turn for Havertz was when people started saying that he's having a revival season at Arsenal. I'm like, no, he's fucking not. He's having the same fucking season than he was that's at Chelsea. Nice that's Jackson that's level goes to the, You know what I mean? No, no, good for Jackson. Good for Jackson. But people want to literally gaslight me into telling me that Havertz is having a revival season at Arsenal when he's literally doing the same fucking thing. And listen, this is on Arteta. Keep playing him in the fucking striker position. Keep playing him at center mid. Until someone plays you know it, well, actually, honestly, I don't even think he's able to play number ten anymore, and that was the position you know I wanted scares, him to play. You know what scares but, me the yeah. most? You know what scares me the most, though, Marshall? Real quick, what? Go ahead. This yeah, go real ahead. quick. I'm afraid that Kai Havertz has done just enough to convince this ownership that we don't need a striker next season. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. That's why he did that. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Face. I am afraid this is a reality, Marshall. Uh, they uh, did that. They did that with Harvard's for us uh, with Tuchel, man. Before we got yeah. Lukaku, he did bro. that, bro. If he could convince Tuchel, he'll definitely convince Arteta. Dude. So you're screwed. And he always since Leverkusen, right? He's always had that purple patch where he just does enough for you he to keep him. But there, was, but there was a little bit more context with our seasons with Havertz. Cause no, but it's first, consistent purple patch, though. It's that same period yeah, where he I, scores. Yeah, I, I, exactly, exactly. Except for last season, but we were all shit last season. But the first season, people were willing to give him time because he's young. First season, all this and that. He was the like 21 season, then. No, he was uh, 20, 20 or 19 even. Uh, yeah, yeah he, was, uh, like, he was really yeah, young. He was, there, so young. he was really young. So the second season, he won us the Champions League. People were more patient with him. Lukaku drama happened, so he had to step up. And he had the purple patch. It wasn't good enough still, but whatever. Then the last season was the straw that broke the camel's back. There was no talking us out of it. Like, Timo was gone, so there was no one to scapegoat him. Um, and you, he, the whole team was exposed. Grand Potter came and just completely took off all all the the paint and everything, stripped everything, and showed all the cracks in this team had. And it showed. It showed completely. And it, Havertz was a big one, as well as Mason Mount. But then, thank you. You guys bought him for however much you bought him. And apparently, according to Sky Sports, he's having a revival season under Arteta. So, I mean, good for you guys, even though it's the same fucking season he's had the past no, two it, it, seasons. No, and it, and it is. And and look, and you guys, you guys got to look at the comp. 
competition mm-hmm. that he's scored against too. Like outside of the two Brentford games where he bailed us out, what has he done? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I was like, gonna, I was about to say, like it's taken. I'm just looking online now. Like the head loss I'm seeing. Like I've just seen Curtis lose his head over Havertz. It took two games. The whole discourse around Havertz happened two games ago. It took him two games to completely ruin that and go back to he's a donkey. Well, yeah. well, I, I, some of us never got off of it. So no, true. But the ones that did, it took them two games to go back. I, two games. I agree. Well, you know what? Hey, 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 Scott, 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 you, you know, know what? I like Scott. Scott sound. That's good. That's good. Hey, you know what? No, most you know of the people on this panel are sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. jazz, obviously. No, no, and and oh, and jazz. Yeah. And jazz. No, no, right. but hey, Scott. But you know what? When I said oh this no, this is this is real. This is oh no, not jazz. No, hey, not hey. Jazz. <laughs> 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 hey, I know. This guy follows. No, no, no. This guy follows me wherever I go. I, I can't. I can't. Hey, the game. The game is the game. But um, <laughs> you know. Hey, and look, look at the positive. You're playing the Bummers Lakers in the, in the first round now. But no, uh, we're 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 beating you in four. So no, no I'm not. I'm not a Laker. I'm not a Laker. Oh, you're not a Laker fan. Yeah, yeah no, we're beating the Lakers in four. Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Oh, you're Oklahoma. Yeah, no, we're beating the Lakers in four. Somebody yeah, the I said, I know, we're doing four. We're going four. I, I heard it. I heard it. But yeah, now it's got actually. The point with the Hubbard thing, though, and I said this on Sarkis and City, most of these Arsenal fans actually don't actually believe in any of the players. I'm convinced of. Like, these guys don't actually rate these guys. Um, For example, the home game against Aston Villa. So much copium. Like, exactly. Like, they're trying to sell themselves the idea that this guy is good and that guy is good. But in reality, though, I don't think that That's these it. guys... Trying to, these guys trying we to. We did it. You know, we did started. it for two seasons. Exactly. I'm just trying to say, like the me. We've been there. Like I said, man. How, like how was yeah? You were playing well for that little bit, bit stint, and it worked off for Arsenal fans because they could be shameless about it. But in reality, the dude is not. The dude is just not that good. And I think. Oh, I, I think deep inside, every Arsenal fans know it. But hey, and hey. So, so I'm a no, I'm I'm a I'm a hey, talking about hey, talking about hey, talking about I'm a hey, hey, no, let, let me um, Marshall, do you actually know what the story? This dude, so this dude's team got beaten up in the final and switched to the Nuggets. Not in the conference one. He switched. Yo, you yes, are huh? shameless. Switched, Just like when Chelsea huh? went through a rough patch, this man went to Rens. Oh, he went on loan to uh-huh, Rens, uh-huh, uh-huh. bro. Game, the guy is shameless. I'm on your kids nation, man. That's what I'm on, man. You are disgusting, man. TJ, uh, you don't know. TJ, <laughs> this guy on your, this guy on your, uh, I mean, your that's not right. right. Um, that's you it. don't know. Ahmed went from in this football content space. Crazy. He's gone from being a Palace fan to a Chelsea. Oh, fan. No, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> just because yeah, I knew I'm one of the first. Ahmed like, will never I'm defeat the Palace cool. allegations, bro. Really. <laughs> you, crazy, you literally. Bro. Had Connor Gallagher as your background earlier today. <laughs> You're not defeating hey, the Palace allegations. Listen, Gallagher Nation, man. Hey. And, and you <laughs> also have a kind of. Listen, Ahmed, you, uh, you must have just admitted one at this point. You show us your Christian out. puzzle shot one. Show, show us your Eze top one. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I, I would rate that. I'd rate the Eze top. I'm not going to lie. Or hey, Lisa. I've got a Lucas jersey, though. Hey. <laughs> Well, really Marshall's really low key trying to game to admit it, man. What are you gonna say, Jazz? No, Arsenal. Awesome. Uh, did you really buy a Palace shirt? No, he's chatting ch- absolutely. Oh, he's not. I mean, I don't know because you yeah, have. Listen, to wait, wait, wait. I, I, I have a, per- I have a perfect. Hold on, hold on. Where is it? Where is it? Damn it! Do I not have it on here anymore? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, give me a second. But wait, anyways, I was gonna chef? ask. And <laughs> we, we all know. What kind of shirt Ahmed has? Okay. Oh we yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all know. We all know. The kind of Ahmed. <laughs> we all know. Oh, you absolute fraud. <laughs> this one, man. This is the we know. Hey, hey. We the, know. Hey, the, context, yeah. the context. The context. to this is. We know. This was. This was a Nations League. For the people that don't know, there was a Nations League game. Germany versus England. Harvard scores a banger. This good. This dude. Turns his camera off, gets the Hubbard shirt, and says, <laughs> Why number nine? Why number nine? But, then, but it's a oh, There's no point giving context yeah. to it. Let him hold it, man. Just to make sure that's that too funny, man. So, no, I mean, so TJ, TJ, tell, TJ, tell you, TJ, you can say what you want about people like me and Jez and Surfer and Flawless. We're crooks, but we're not Ahmed. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not. You're not. You're right. You're right. You know what? You're. 
Correct. Correct. And, and, I mean, you know, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You guys are crooks, but Ahmed is a fugitive, dude. They haven't locked this guy up yet. They need to lock him. Oh my God! Call the police. <laughs> call the police. Somebody he he, he be on the Google website for wanted people, man. You know, That's what he is, man. American waffle. I need to add oh the do, 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 do. FBI open up <laughs> for all the fraudulent claims that we had. Oh my days! But uh, I did want to ask you, TJ, because yeah. this was brought up earlier, and I never actually got the answer. But I will say, someone said, uh, I think it was Ahmed that said this. What club would be in for Gabriel Jesus? Because Gabriel Jesus is not good enough uh, to be your number nine, I think. And he's also now injury prone, we could say. Yeah. Um, I would say, Jez, I think out of all the, the top six, I, I think you're the only team that would probably consider a Gabriel Jesus. I don't hey, need a Jesus on my team. No, 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 no,
No, nah, but I'm gonna be real, bro. Like, <laughs> bro, the man's again, going like, into his freaking <laughs> uh, uh, spellbinding circle in the background, bro. <laughs> like he's he's really like brave. That. Listen, uh, can, we talk about, can we talk about? I want to talk about a certain club, yeah, in Spain. You know what I mean? I want to talk about a certain Espanol club. You know what I mean? Uh, what talk about? to me, bro. Chris, talk to me, Chris. Talk to me, man. Chris, I want Chris to talk about it, that club first. But I also want to. And is Anahad still here? Corey, is Corey P here? Bro, nah, he's, he's this hiding guy. here, yeah, because we, we you know, a certain French winger was cooking that he was cutting out. That's all I'm going to speak on. Still, no, I, I, I'll be real. I'll be real. I think, I think Bacola was. Jazz, your team cooking, cook, man. Cooking, cooking, cooking. Oh, we'll talk is about that. Cooking is a stretch, personally. Like, I think he was. I, I think he was active. Like he again, he just did. He just did what you're just supposed to do. And like when you were having ten man on the pitch. Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't think. This is the funny part, and I talked about it before as well. Um, I think Barcelona win the game if they stay on with eleven man. I because uh, what well, the arrival challenge. Was blatantly stupid. I still don't know why you made the tackle. Um, I said, I said, you might as well let him score because at least you still a goal up and you still eleven men on the pitch. And this is crazy because Gordon's players, having a really good season though. Still, still, yeah, I think I think Gordon is good though. So I don't know why. Yeah. You, I don't know. I, don't I think Gordon's got like what seventeen goals. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Bro, he's, he's got he's a lot of fucking goals. I don't know. But anyways, um, and I, I said this. I said this. Like, I think. I think um, Barcelona, bro. Araujo, bro, this dude better be paying the wages. Dude's be nope. better paying I, the food and everything. Cause like, which is I funny. Know. Cause my centre back, if he did that shit, everybody would call him a bozo, um, an idiot, an aggressive fucker, and all that. Argentina, an Argentine um, aggressive fucker. All, all, all these things they would say. Hey, if this was Buddy Ashida, they would call him black monkey or some shit. And I'm black people. And I'm, and I'm, 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 I'm black people. I can say it. I can say it. But uh, the, point, the point is that huh? certain players, certain players here outside the Premier League. I don't know how. I don't know how. I don't know. I don't know how certain Ooh. players get away with certain things. I, I swear, I don't. I don't get I, in terms of slander. But then I see my player or other players getting slander for the same shit. Oh, whatever, man. I, I mean, I don't really care about Barcelona so much. By the way, people, Mbappe was dog shit. Like. He better steps up in the Dortmund. He was shameless, you know. He was actually the celebration was shameless, man. I can't lie to you. Yeah, I, I, I get the celebration. It's just that he was complete dog shit. No, I was saying his celebration was shameless even after the performance he was having. That was my point, but fair enough. Yeah, I mean, the, where's Chris? I, I man? Where's Chris? Uh, he he had to leave. He had to leave at midnight around. Mm. Uh, his head. But I, a question it, for you guys, yeah. though, and question for people in the chat, obviously. Um, I know a lot of people have been saying, hey, bring Xavi to Chelsea, Xavi to Chelsea. Do you guys, are you guys in the camp that Xavi's a shit manager? Or do you think that his circumstances, his environment at Barcelona is much worse than what, it, what anyone has to deal with at Chelsea? And he, made, honest, he made do with what he could do. I'll be honest, obviously, Chelsea's not my football club. But if I talk from just a neutral standpoint, um, I, kinda, I was shitting on Xavi for a good half of the season. But when he got sucked and then he decided to change the system, I'm like, okay, you know what? He changed the system. So he's introduced more youngsters to the team and you've seen how good Barcelona played. Um, again, I, I repeat, I think Barcelona go through if Araujo doesn't make the tackle because I think they managed the game really well. Um, and I think Xavi kind of showed majority over the over the season as a manager. I still think he's mm -hmm. still a bit naive. I think there's still a couple of things that he can do. Um, and he's very emotional. The way he gets himself sent off. I know his team was... Um, that was very was, dumb of him to get sent yeah, off the way he did, like, by the, the way. Thing, yeah. like, I, I kind of get it because, again, a bunch of things happen. But this is where, as a manager, considering as well, it's 10-1 already in a Champions League tie. You kind of have to keep you cool um, cool in the, these situations. But then I kind of get it as well because Javi's still very young in this managerial career. Like I think people kind of mm. forget that as well. So, mm, is he ready for a Chelsea team? I don't know. I mean, he's leaving Barcelona. So I kind of feel like he wants to take a smaller job first before he goes to a big club again. I mean, wasn't he already at a small club before Barcelona? Yeah, he, but it wasn't Saudi or, or Qatar or something. Yeah, yeah. Saying like, I think like maybe maybe like a Real Sociedad that somewhere in Spain, like where you can just kind of because Xavi Alonso is a good example because he had multiple offers 
um, for first teams in different countries. Mm -hmm. But he decided to stay at the B team of Sociedad and just develop there and then take over um, Leverkusen a year later after rejecting all these teams. And I feel like Xavi maybe wants to do something similar where he goes to a team in Spain where he can, you know what, let me take over this team. Let me just kind of gain more experience and then see and um, see where I can go next. And Xavi, Xavi is still very young. So he's not in a hurry necessarily to go and coach a big team or something. I don't think so. Mm. What, are, what about the rest of you guys? What do you think about Xavi? Or Sh Xavi? 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 He's got, I think, again, he's got interesting tactics. I think maybe he can be a bit of, again, a hothead at times. Would you take but him at Chelsea? I feel like he's already left quite a complicated situation, which, mm -hmm. you know, didn't end so well for him. I don't know if I want to be putting him into a similar situation with us right now. Well, that's, that's kind of the thing, though. Like, is it similar? Because I feel like that Barcelona situation was much worse than ours. Much worse. But uh, it, it can't... But it because can of be, economic uh, levers, you know, and all that stuff. Again, it can, that can be true, but... Uh, even then, even with us, there's still like some stuff that's a bit crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I so, mean, um, I think it's slightly better, but yeah, I think the, the way I look at it, one of the main things I think about when I get that question asked to me, I think about why he's leaving Barcelona, and that's where I say he can't join Chelsea. He left Barcelona because of the scrutiny, mm. and he will be under the wrong the mic. He will be under the microscope if he comes to Chelsea. He won't be able to handle it. He has to go. He has to go somewhere lower first, like, like, like we said just now, um, because you know, look, look at what the scrutiny did with Potter. Potter never had that scrutiny before. He comes here and he drowns under it. Xavi's already drowned at Barcelona. At least, at least him meant not not necessarily with the results because he has picked it up recently, but more on the mental side. He can't cope with it. And that led him to leave. So I think that's a big consideration when you're answering that question. Mm -hmm. Hassan, what about you? What are, you, what are your thoughts on Enchilati? Uh, not Enchilati, I'm sorry. Uh, Xavi. Would you take Xavi at Chelsea? Or do you think it's just... Uh, um, at this point, you like as much as I don't rate Poch, I'd uh, rather just keep him. Because Poch is the only, as I've said before... Um, Poch is the only one that I've seen in terms of manager that's actually like st stabilized the squad despite how bad we are. The Big only, the only like, if I'm looking at objectively, Chelsea. objectively speaking, the only thing that he has or he's failed to do mm. is a uh, consistent wins in the Premier League, which to be honest is a lot of new players, a lot of new squads. I slowly before I rated the squad enough, slowly like I've. Of mixed reservations and opinions about him and uh winning the final which he should have done and that's a suckable offense but um i'd rather keep Poch than Xavi because if you bring in in Xavi he is going to get cooked like you and don't forget it's gonna look bad on Bali it's gonna look bad on Ekbali it's gonna look bad in front of the financial investors if they suck Poch now bringing Xavi and he feels like I, I'd, I'd say for the sake of everyone's sanity that we keep, I would. Well, we're gonna go insane either way with the decision. But um, Poch, Poch thing is probably the best choice right now, unless we get like a world class manager, unless the uh, Ancelotti or someone pops up. And that's my yeah. genuine. That's my genuine non biased opinion. Despite how badly I want Poch out. <clears throat> <laughs> um, and Prime, I mean. What are your thoughts to close this out before we continue talking about the other uh, the other matches? Uh, is your question in particular uh, Poch or Xavi? I mean, yeah, yeah, essentially, yeah. <laughs> um, Poch or Xavi? I mean, I guess Xavi is more... I guess you could say technical. However, I don't want either of them. Okay, I'll. I'll okay, I'll be like fair. But I, I don't like, um, Poch like in terms of tactically and all of that. But like, 
I'm also not stupid. I like I can I see why people love him. I see why Spurs fans loved him. Um, I see why United fans loved him and wanted him at United. I see why Chelsea fans fell in love with him during preseason. Poch, hmm. like he's a likable character, and he let me take my glasses off. And he says a lot of like uh, nice things, like but ultimately tactically he like doesn't get things correct he not only plays players out of position which i don't really mind that per se but like he doesn't use players for the right attributes in those said positions hmm. and he gets things wrong continuously tactically if he can improve and all that or at least go back to how he was at spurs then i'm fine with that i was assuming we'd get how he was at Spurs. And that I'm okay with. But if he's going to continue being how he has been for all of the season, then no, he shouldn't be here. There are better uh, coaches and there are people who are... There are there are managers out there who are just as good man-manager-wise as him out there who are much better coaches that I would want to bring in, if what I'm mm-hmm. saying makes sense. So, yeah, yeah. like, this is me being fair about Poch. Like, the man management-wise, I think he's got it more or less. Barring a few players, like how he's handled Matson, uh, I think he's got most of it more or less, like, spot on. But it's mm. the tactical side that I've got a massive problem with. If he can fix that, then, like, I will hold my um, negative thoughts and fine, I guess you can say. But, again, it's to be... What will make me consider to change my mind is how he handles the rest of the season. If we continue winning our games and we manage to finish in a European spot and we win the FA Cup, then yeah, he can be in consideration. I still wouldn't keep him personally, but like, I he can still be in the consideration to keep his job because then he would have achieved something. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, so that wraps up pretty much the Barcelona's portion portion of the, the review. Um, let's talk about Dortmund and Atletico Madrid, which Dortmund, and I, I wish Jess was still here, but Dortmund absolutely came back and walloped these guys. Like, that was insane. I didn't think Dortmund was capable of that. And I understand home field advantage, but what happened, guys, to this Simeone ball that everyone was all hyped up about? It didn't work. Good enough. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got to hold it because I, I did say I did yeah. say that let's go. We're going to win one nil. That was my prediction in the in the previous calling show. So hey, it didn't yeah. work. I, I take the L. Yeah, I mean, Matson got himself a goal. Yeah, Matson, Matson's been really impactful with this team. I'm not going to be surprised if if Dortmund decide to to buy Matson and activate that release clause at the end of the season. I really won't be surprised. But I mean, these guys came back and and completely dominated that that game. They were losing on aggregate, and I mean, good on them. That's the first time. I don't know if anyone knows the history. That's the first time I think in ten years that um. Dortmund ends up getting this far into the. Yeah, it must the be since Klopp. In the cup. Since Klopp was there, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since Klopp, pretty much. So, I mean, I'm impressed with it's what I saw. I don't think they can replicate it. In eleven years. In eleven years, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, last time they won the semi-final, they they got to the final. I was in Wembley, right? How, yeah. Mm-hmm. How, how um. How do you guys think they fare up against PSG? Because that PSG that I saw was very convincing. I'm not going to lie. It's Mbappe, he just toys with teams. He wakes up and plays when he feels like playing. And I'm not going to give Mbappe all the credit. I think Dembele played his part. I think Barcola also made an impact. And Vitinha. Vitinha was impressive. Um... Do you guys do you guys think Dortmund? Because right now, I'll be honest, I think PSG beat Dortmund. But after seeing what Dortmund did to Atletico Madrid, I think this team is capable of breaking down any structure. Be a lot more competitive than you think. I think so too. 
Yeah, but I, I slightly edge it because of Luis Enrique. Mm, fair enough. But um, listen, at the end of the day, bro, is what is. I just think BBB just were able to finish a battle, whereas I think Atletico, bro, they, they were not clinical enough when they had their chances, bro. You still have Morata up front. Oh, yeah, yeah Morata yeah. missed, like, bare some, some chances as well. Mm-hmm. The the one v one of the keeper he, keeper he tried to just chip it past the keeper and completely missed it. Yeah. That's uh, you can't you can't have especially in the Champions League. That's the thing to Morata though. We've always known that about Morata. He, hey, listen, he, people people were trying to do Morata Ramontada earlier this season. Never changes, man. The only time he turns up on is for Spain, and that's it, man. Bro, I expect it done. Like my pick since the start of the season has been Bayern to win the Champions League. But um, since the round of six, since the quarterfinal draw was made, I said, like, my final pick was Bayern on the, the one side. The other side was Atletico Madrid. Like, I really want to be mm-hmm. only to win a Champions League. <sighs> yeah, uh, it's frustrating. But it also shows that Bay- Dortmund should not be underestimated. I underestimated Dortmund. Mm-hmm. I thought that Atletico would... Like, but not like easily, but like they would dispatch Dortmund and go through. Um, yeah, PSG should not treat this Dortmund side lightly. Um, Enrique is a very good manager, like tactically, but like I look at this PSG team, they're not that good. We've got a lot of young players, to be fair, but like even if I look at their elder statesmen, like Mbappe went missing for the majority of both legs. Um, you've got, I know Dembele had a great performance in the second leg, but usually he's quite poor. He doesn't always mm-hmm. turn up consistently. Um, Marquinhos wasn't at his best either. Like, I don't know. Dude, yeah, I think this tie, saves. Yeah, I think this tie relies. I don't even, is it 50 50? Maybe. I think it relies on Mbappe. Like, if Mbappe actually chooses to turn yeah. up, then obviously PSG will go through quite e- easily. But, like, will he turn up? He was pocketed mm-hmm. in the first leg. The second leg, he didn't do much. But he got the goals, and they went through. So, I don't know. It's going to be a, such an mm-hmm. interesting semi-final to watch, though. Yeah, I, I'm actually looking forward to watching that one, especially after what I saw from Dortmund, what they're capable of when they were behind. I need to emphasize that, ladies and gents, they were losing on aggregate, and they came back and dominated. I mean, they they. Well, actually, let me let me look at the the stats real quick because the second half they dominated. Because they were they were still losing on aggregate because um, Correa ended up scoring a goal, and they had to come back, and then they scored two to come back from that. I think I think that's how it went. Let me just look this up real quick. I could be wrong. Mm, here it is. Nope, this is the wrong one. 4-2 is crazy. Um, but yeah, Correa scored in the 64th. And yeah, and then Fulkrug and Sabitzer. This Sabitzer gets the winning one. And Sabitzer also, I'm not going to lie, Sabitzer looked incredible that game. I haven't seen Sabitzer play like that since um, the uh, Red Bull. Uh, Red Bull. Uh, Stra- uh, oh, my God. Salzburg? No. Not, was it Salzburg? He was in Salzburg. Leipzig. 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 Thank Leipzig? you. Thank you. Uh, for some reason, it's I kept thinking Salzburg. Salzburg. Yeah, yeah. He was, I mean, uh, he is Austrian, Leipzig. so it's the same league. Yeah. So I haven't seen that 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 um Sabitzer plays since since Leipzig. So it, it was it was incredible to see see him turn up. Madsen turned up as well. Um he got himself a goal. He he had a great performance. And it was just it was just nice to see. Um and then lastly guys, I mean what happened today against Man City? Because I feel like we overlooked Man City. And I've been saying it over and over and over again. And I know listen, I'm not gonna discredit Man City. It was a tough side. There was a reason why it was a draw up until the end. But 
I'm just not convinced with this Man City side. I really am not. I haven't been this whole season. This is a much weaker Man City. Erling Holland, say what you will. The first game, sure. He did what he could to distract defenders and allow uh, Foden and allow uh, everyone else to have an opportunity to, to have a go at, at the at the goal. But this game, I, I don't know if I can say the same. I don't know if I'm giving Holland the same credit of being a, uh, a distraction or, or being a menace to the center backs and distracting the center backs to allow his team to, to get the win. I'll try and... I'll try and help you answer that, though. What, what, what didn't he do, in your opinion? What, what were you looking for that wasn't there today? I, I just I just wanted more... Be, be in more positions to score goals. And I feel like last season, Holland constantly found himself in positions to score goals. And this season, I just... Listen, I don't know if it's a mentality thing because of what happened to him earlier this season, but it, it's he's just not the same striker he was last season, this season. He's still the top goal scorer in the Premier League, or joint top goal scorer now. Um, joint I don't think the problem is Holland. Yeah, I don't think the problem is Holland. I think the problem is Man City, because Holland relies a lot on service, and if he's not getting service, then he can look isolated. He's but but even what, but listen, even when he doesn't get service, though, he's still occupying defenders, and then that for the responsibility falls on the players around him to exploit the spaces created, and. Hmm. There's just not that, that we're not finding the right balance of that yet of, of both him scoring goals and him creating space with his presence. I disagree with Prime because I feel like this season his issue is I think it's been blaring. He's missed a lot more big chances than last season. I know his conversion mm-hmm. rate was never great. I know he's he's he oh. always misses big chances, but this season he's missed. A lot of incredible well, amounts of big chances. I would need to see the percentage on that because last season he had the most big chances missed in Europe. So I'd need I to see. I what think percentage. I think we did this on Discord once, and I think his conversion was around twenty-five to thirty, which was like an elite sort of conversion. But I think it'll be a lot less now because he's probably has missed quite a few of the yeah, last the recent games. Conversion, right? I'm talking about miss, chances missed, like he had. The most big chances in Europe this last season, and he was so. So, it's, so that shows it's on Man City creating for him, though. This season, to answer your question, and Jesus Christ, Darwin Nunes, you're a bum. This season, um, in the Premier League, and I'm only putting the Premier League up there. I don't know. I, I'm not sure how I'm going to go about checking this for all of Europe on the spot. But in the Premier League, he's had 30 uh, big chances missed, which is leading the table. Darwin Nunes is 25. Nicholas Jackson is 18, but we won't discuss Nicholas Jackson agendas, you know. Um, in 2023, last season, he had 28. So he's gotten more big chances missed this season in the Premier League than last season. And we're so not wait, done with the season yet. 28 this, this season? season how many this? He, this season, is just, he's at 30. Okay, so... So you could argue more. he's had more chances this season than last season. Yeah, but what are the quality of those chances? They're big chances. I'm assuming they're, you know, XG is pretty high for the for the amount the the chance of him scoring no, a goal. Like no, but like I would need to see the because I don't really trust in things like XG because they don't really work those things properly. I would need to see the quality of chances we saw last season, the quality of chances City had, or City were creating for Holland. We, we can just see with our eyes from this season to last season, City have dropped off. I don't think it's yeah. Haaland's fault. Like, I can see the chances they're creating for him this season. It's not on the same level. And I'm not saying he doesn't have his faults, by the way. The way he's being pocketed yeah. by certain centre backs who are physical towards him, uh, Rudiger, Gabriel, for example, mm-hmm. is very poor from someone who's going to be an elite striker. However, in saying that, last season, he was he not pocketed against Chelsea twice or four times whenever how yeah. many times he played? But it's just like, but that's the thing though. Like it's not Erling Holland. There's not this isn't new to Erling Holland. People have been pocketing Erling Holland since his Dortmund days. He was this. He was just as good at Dortmund than he was here as well. You know, it's electric here now because he wasn't getting pocketed in Germany. 
it wasn't Pogba in Germany. But in Champions mm. League games, for example, like when when he was playing Champions League with Dortmund, yeah, he would get pocketed. But I, I don't know. I feel like he was more clinical prior to this season. And of the chances being the quality of chances, like this is why I say, and I've been I saying, I know, so but like, how, how, like, but the, but the, the question is, like, I, I get what you're saying, and I agree with you, like, we would need to see what the chances are, right? But I I'm mean, assuming, since De Bruyne has uh, came back, he's been picking up again, so it's not really a coincidence what Prime is had, saying. I, I don't even think he's been picking up again because let me look at his recent goals. Um, yeah, transfer market will show you. Um, his whole stop by game by game so when did the, I think the boy, the boy the, I think like didn't let the boy get like four or five assists on his way back and like half it was like Holland or what I don't think so check transfer no no there was but what I was trying to get at but, but what I was trying to get at before is that I uh, I understand seeing what the chances are right but I'm assuming that the big chances missed that is going to take the the um, data to measure it from last season and be consistent with this season. And is regardless, it big chances, like, uh, or chances missed. Big chances. That's the stat I'm looking at. The thing is, though, without without knowing how they measure a big chance, but, it's but impossible then, to say. But then I ask, like, how do we? How would you go about determining if he's been less clinical this season versus last season? Then, then wouldn't it wouldn't all be based on the chances not, we have to look at all of it. How many, Is there a stat you would look at? I need to know how many big chances he's getting. If he's not getting as many as he got last season, then he's going mm-hmm. to miss more. Mm-hmm. Okay, fair enough. Um, I understand that. Uh, let's and see. by the way, so... even if everything we're saying, he's still on course to score like 30 goals in a season or something. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. like, even all of this for Holland. He's still doing what he's supposed to be doing. Like it's crazy. When did uh when did KDB come back? I think I January, KD... February, but he's been he's been inconsistent since then. Like in yeah, terms he's of been availability. In and out of the lineup. Um yeah. the twenty second game week twenty two, so the last uh week of January, January thirty first. Yeah. Up until now, Erling Holland only has one, two, three, four, six. Six goals in the Premier League. So, KDB coming back hasn't made a single difference, Hassan, to your point. In fact, it's it's looked worse. Which is what I was uh, alluding to. I, I don't even think it's that he doesn't he doesn't have KDB behind him. I think he's no, genuinely... Hassan. He was actually... He was scoring more goals prior to KDB coming back. No, Hassan made the KDB point. I said City have not been as good as they no, were. No, I said season. that. I said Hassan. That I was addressing Hassan. Oh, okay. I said that. Yeah, but City yeah, no, have been as good as they were last season. So, mm-hmm. if they haven't been as good as they were last season, then they are not creating the same level, the same quality of chance as they were last season. Hence why Haaland will be missing more. Because we know Maybe. Haaland misses chance anyway. Yeah. I mean, I don't disagree. I, I see where you're coming from because that's a good point. I would like to see how many big chances um, Man City have created this season in general, and then see, or how many chances, how many big chances that they give in Holland. I would assume that the big chances would be fifty, right? Because if we're taking the thirty plus the twenty goals he scored. That would be the big chances because the other big chances that he gets would be the ones that he scores. I mean, not all goals are from big chances. Yeah, exactly. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, fair um, enough. I, I will say, though, one other thing we've got to consider, this guy is a young player. Like, I think that gets lost in everyone saying how fantastic he is and he broke the goal-scoring record. He is a young player and he is, yeah. right now, There, you know, whether it's right or wrong, whether it's correct or incorrect, there is some crazy discourse going on about him in the media. He's a League He's Two playing. level football player. Oh yeah, that's ridiculous. And all, I know, saw a Roy Keane. What if said. that's playing on his mind? Like, I, I know people call him a Terminator and all that, but he is a young kid still. He's twenty three, but I mean, I get what you're saying, uh, and I and I saw what you you said Roy Keane saying what he said. Like, I understand what he's coming from, but I think that it, I think that example is so over exaggerated. I don't think, like, yes, he's good at scoring goals. And yes, you can criticize the fact that 
he doesn't have um everything else in his game is weak to as opposed to like the the um average world class striker we we know your Thierry Henry's your uh Robert Lewandowski's Harry Kane's you see what else they can do outside of just scoring goals Erling Haaland just scores goals he can give you good assists as well he is capable of doing it um and I would argue that Guardiola uses him in other forms as well outside of that but I I, to to say that he's not a, a good player that he's a league two at best um outside of the goals is, is i think is absurd um, i mean i'm i'm, I'm again like, the reason i said whether that's right or wrong is because there is some merit to it i mean he hmm. literally does nothing but at the end of the day like i'm just saying the point is you know he's still a young guy so you know as great as he's been maybe he's due a rough patch who knows yeah, and it happens to all the players. I get and that. plus, you know, it's it's a three team title race, so the the heat the heat dial is turned up. Mm-hmm. Right. So. I mean, the, the, is this going to affect their chances in the FA Cup and the title race? They have a Tottenham to play that's postponed. Well, actually, let me look at their 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 fixtures properly. I think I think with the, with the FA Cup, I think it depends if he plays or not. Because did, did he get taken off at any point today? Holland, uh, let me check. Actually, I'm assuming he would have because he didn't take a penalty, and that's crazy if they didn't let him take a penalty. Holland did get taken off. Okay, what minute? Uh, I'll check right now. Because I, I was just going to say it, it depends if he plays or not. They could they could rest him, but potentially. Julian Alvarez came in in the 90th minute, so he played a full 90. Yeah, well, they, they, they could maybe they could rest him potentially. Play yeah. Alvarez at striker, or you know whoever else. Maybe, may, may, maybe if if worse comes to worse for them or whatever, maybe they go back to their old way. They used to play with a false nine, just, mm-hmm. just for this game. You know, you never know. Yeah, yeah, it could. I mean, Foden's on on fire. Uh, you could you could get away with playing him in false nine. You have Alvarez as well. Um, it's not like they don't have depth that can still you know give us a challenge and a run for our money. Um, I just think though it's, it's it's more to you like you've said it, Marshall, that they have gotten worse, and that's a part of it too. You know, mm-hmm. they no, when you're when, when you're replacing, you know, Gundogan with with Kovacic Gundogan. and um, Mares. and Nunez. You know, when you're replacing um, when you're replacing Riyad Mahrez with Doku. You know, it's, these are these are downgrades but mm-hmm. across the board downgrades, particularly. Yeah, so. And by the way, like City's downgrades. City downgrading, like, is still better than just about every other team. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, I would say. Bro, they could win the league this season. I'm looking at their fixtures, and they could. As long as there's, they no do have, a, they do have a good run of fixtures. To be fair to them, yeah. Like, and now they don't out, have to worry out of the. Europe. Out of the top three, they certainly have yeah, the biggest have advantage, the both being at the top of the table and with the games they have. Mm-hmm. There's Brighton, there's Nottingham Forest, there's Wolves, there's Fulham, and then you have Tottenham. That could be a banana slip. And West Ham could also be a banana slip. You never know. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how City handle this. And now that City aren't in Europe anymore... I think they're going to have time to rest players and they might put their best lineup for the rest of the season. So I could see there maybe being rotation in the FA Cup. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting, ladies and gents. Uh, he truly won tonight with City holding it. Yeah, because I did predict Real Madrid to win the whole thing. So we'll see. Um, all right, ladies and gents. I think think that wraps it up unless you guys want to add anything i mean real madrid we have um we have our boy carlo ancelotti i'm gonna say best manager in europe uncomfortable conversations for champions league one potentially a fifth coming up um that's more than any manager already with four so i don't know this guy has proven it at the highest level 
And he's yeah, doing I, th- it with I think he would. Three do. of his best players. Three of his best players out. His best goalkeeper, Courtois. Alaba, his starting center back, and Militao, who just came back from an ACL. Yeah, but, you know, listen, everyone else wants to talk about injuries, you know. Ten Hag, Poch. Like, get over yourselves. This is this is a proper injury crisis they're having right now. Yeah. And, and and in terms of the squad building as well, their only striker is Hosselu. Yeah, they and they're still. Striker. That's another thing. Their only striker is Hosselu. They've had three ACLs and, and plus a myriad of other injuries. They're still top of La Liga and they are favourites to win the UCL. When, That's when how you manage an injury crisis. Don Carlo, man. Oh, there's no excuses. There's Don no excuses Carlo. Ryan, when you're Don Carlo, there's no excuses. Say no, no, no. It's no, not no, even about like, Carlo. No. It's about Real Madrid. Real Madrid as a club. They just have that, yeah, that I mentality. I, I know, I know. But Don Carlo, you got to give him credit, man. Oh, of course. Zidane wouldn't have been able to do this. Zidane no, no, would have pulled this off. It's big, it's big club heritage, bro. When you're a big club. Nah, 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 nah. That's Don Carlo, man. He's Zidane fraud, couldn't anyway, do this. Zidane couldn't do this. Zidane Zidane's got put into also. a Zidane won. Zidane did a three P. Hold on a minute. Yeah, but... I mean, once you got rid of some of the greatest players in the world, I don't know. I mean, I what, he, he re- okay, he replaced Ronaldo with an 18-year-old Vinicius Junior. Mm. But that—that's not—that's not fair. What did Vinicius Junior do under Zidane? And what did Vin- what did Don Carlo turn Vinicius Junior into? Hmm. I mean, Car- Carly, I, I mean, I, I'd give I'd give Carlo credit for that, but. I'd give Carlo credit for that because he's a great manager, but at the same time, you got you know correlation isn't always causation. You know, just because it Is happened it at the same. Hey, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I will say one more thing. One more thing to be yeah, shameless yeah. here, Prime and, and and Oliver. What was Benzema doing under Zidane? Not to say Benzema was bad, but then look at what Benzema was doing under Don Carlo. Hmm. <laughs> you got to give it fifteen out of ten. Don Carlo and Benzema that got. Pocketed by Andreas Christensen and got ruined by Mason Mount when we won the Champions League. That Don Carlo and Benzema. That was Zidane. That wasn't. That wasn't. That was Zidane. It was. That was Zidane. Oh, hey, what much cares for both squads all time? That was Zidane, and then Don They're Carlo beat strong. us on the on the second one, and then the third time Don Carlo still beat us, but that was Lampard tax. Don Carlo beat us with Lampard. Have some shit. Yeah. But he also beat us with Tuchel, to be fair. I, I finished Tuchel when he was on coke. That doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, he's oh, right. And no. <laughs> no. Carlos it. never beaten us in a, in a fair fight, so. Okay. But he didn't. He didn't, Joel. When? He didn't. When? I mean, Mendy was Don sabotaging Carlos as well, man, so. One. I'm just saying. Don Carlo is my number one. Too cool. You're up there too. You're in the conversation. Don Carlo ball a two no lead against us at the burner bow. There were two no. Yeah. They're throwing up going into the burner bow and they bottled it and they lost that game. In the second. They lo- they, yeah, they lost but the they game and they went through. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, that's how just how the aggregate went. They only went yeah, through exactly. because of a, a, a bad refereeing decision. True. You're not wrong. But no. hey, at the end, you know of the we, we 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 can yeah. we can run that now because the, the Gabriel handball in the first in the first leg against that is insane. Bayern. The fact that oh, okay. but 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 Alonso but Alonso can't have his goal. I guess, no, but, I'm, not uh, I guess. Counting, I'm not counting that Champions League for for Ancelotti. Sorry. <laughs> hmm. We're gonna have to run <laughs> it back, <laughs> or we're gonna have to take Don. Hey, I'm Don I'm, I'm counting it because Liverpool can hold that. Take him back. No, I don't want I don't want Carlo. I'll keep Poch. Enough of Prime now. <laughs> yeah, we've had enough of Prime. No, I will not have this. That is jail time, sir. That is sin bin worthy. But either way, I had to end it anyways, Prime. So I'm going to end it. I'll bring it back in a second. Um, ladies and gents, big up to everyone. Big up to all you guys who have been watching tonight. Uh, quite the lengthy show. Thank you for coming in. For those of you who did call in today, where is my? Oh, here it is. Okay. Um, but ladies and gents, be sure to smash up the like button if you haven't done so already. Be sure to also subscribe if you haven't done so already. Also hit the bell notification so you're notified whenever we do go live. Be sure to check out the comments below. Let us know your thoughts on all the games and what you thought of all all the uh, performances. 
your performance, your favorite game that you saw uh, in the second leg of the uh, quarterfinals, and who do you think is going to win the Champions League? Let us know in the comments below. Tiers starting at 99p, and those uh, four different tiers come with one tier where if you're a proper Chels, you get a shout out at the end of proper Chels, proper casual, you get a shout out at the end of every show, and that's going to go to. Suprotin, M3, Adam CFC, Wasabi Meets World, Orizont, Orizont Ereditar, B Man, JC, IE Wani, Gabriel A, Ishi, A Solomon, EE, Hassan Nawaz, Uncle Jester FC, Will, OG Triple Jesus, and Dark. And for uh, for reminder's sake, one last big shout out to Oliver and Real Chris who have now entered into the Cement Mixer Hall of Fame. So welcome guys to being uh, a year as a member and being in the Cement Mission Hall of Fame. So big up to you guys. Um, that being said, we are going to wait out. Listen, remind Staffy that he has a stinky, stinky, stinky Tuchel agenda and to respect Thomas Tuchel. So you can copy this raid message or you can go on the stream and say, respect Thomas Tuchel. And I shall have him hold it tomorrow for sure. Oh, you... you also like Thomas Tuchel as well on every single football final manager you love what what happened you got cut off for a second Thomas Tuchel's trying to prevent you from discussing <laughs> slanderous <laughs> he stole his wife I guess but... <laughs> yeah Thomas Tuchel stole your wife oh, you didn't hear me you not hear me yeah no you you were laggy for a hot second there um, okay well but yeah, yeah you think you can crash on David Luiz I'm crashing on every football player and manager you love <laughs> Huh? Well, you, you, know can you, know okay. you can start with Claudio Pizarro. You can start with Claudio Pizarro. Let Chelsea get relegated next season. Let Marshall cry. I'm here for it. There you go. Huh? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Ladies and gents, we're going to end it right here. Big up to everyone for being here. Uh, go ahead and uh, let Staffy know where you're coming from. Let him hold that with his stinky Thomas Tuchel agenda. And we'll see you again. I'll be on uh, American Waffle tomorrow, so I'll see you guys over there. That'll be 8 p.m. my time. So that's uh, two, three, that's 1 a.m. your time in the UK, ladies and gents. So uh, go ahead and check that out if you want to check it out. If not, you can watch the playback. And if you're here joining us late, you can watch the playback as well. Uh, and then you'll be seeing a lot of streams from uh, Casually FC. So hit the bell notification and subscribe so you don't miss a single one. Ladies and gents, that being said, have a wonderful night. I was about to say Tuchel out. But actually, honestly, I don't care anymore because Tuchel did a job. He beat Arsenal. Tuchel out. But also, stay casual. Peace.